Welcome everyone to the special meeting of the Board of Education for CCSD 59. Uh, I will turn it over to Janice to get started and then we'll talk through uh, just the best way to proceed with uh, how to make the presentation go as smooth as possible. So uh, Janice, if you want to start the meeting. Yep, well, thank you everyone. Anybody who's out there listening in as well as all the board members and guests for this evening. It is 7.03 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call, Mrs. Petrielli. Um, Krinsky. Present. Berlevich. Present. Lang. Present. Mencia. Present. Petrielli present. Reed. Present. And Schumacher. Present. All here. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, I have not received any comments and suggestions from the public, so we will move right along to 4.0, our interviews uh, with our superintendent consulting firms. We should have uh, Dr. Friedman, who's here with us and Dr. Mark Friedman, um, Dr. Ann Nolan, and I don't know if you have a person who's gonna be yes. running. We have uh, the, Cam the, Terman, and Cam is Cam with Turman us. She's now. gonna run our slides, and she's our jack of all trades. She's a Ben Gray for oh. our company. Hello, good okay. evening, everyone. Good Hello. evening, and good evening. You, look, you look like BWP. That's what uh, <laughs> Ben does. <laughs> you look like District 59. <laughs> All right, so uh, take it away. We're looking forward to hearing from you. It's great. It's, it's great to be back here. Uh, we'll give you a little history, uh, specifically Mardell and um, my, uh, my years in, in District 70, in, in District 59, truly were wonderful years. Uh, Janice and I have had a couple of conversations the last uh, week or two, and we've relived the good old days. And... Uh, Hopefully now we can introduce ourselves to all of the other board members and get you to uh, see in us why you should select us to be your search firm as you embark on this really long and, and exciting task of finding a new superintendent. So with that, the typical thing that we, we do when we start off on a presentation like this and by the way, we haven't done a lot of the virtual presentations. We love being in front of a board in person mm -hmm. and Anne's shaking her head. And it's, it's one of those things we're going to live with. But what we have done is we've, we've done quite a few searches under the pandemic umbrella. Mm -hmm. So we got caught in the spring with several ongoing searches and we were able to come up with a lot of new and interesting ways to deal with the restrictions that we have in, in trying to run a search during a pandemic. So to start with, I'm gonna let my colleague Anne tell you a little bit about herself, and then I'll recap my career, and then we'll jump right into our PowerPoint and Cam's gonna walk us through it. Like Mark, I'm glad to be here this evening and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with all the Zoom challenges that we have. Um, but my name is Anne Noland, and I'm a retired school superintendent. Um, I really basically only worked in two districts my whole career. I was uh, did tw first 25 years of my career in Decatur, Illinois, which is downstate, a very diverse district, and then moved to the suburbs and did 12 years uh, in Forest Ridge 142, which is on, in the southwest suburbs in Oak Forest. Um, I retired there as superintendent uh, about 15 years ago, and then I have been working with BWP since that time. Uh, in the 15 years, which sounds like a lot, and it, and it has been, I, I feel like we have been uh, very successful in the searches that we've conducted. Uh, I'm a partner in the firm, and Mark's going to tell you in a few minutes that he's the president, so we think you've got the A-team. And um, yeah, over the past uh, several years, I've conducted 15, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, over 100 searches. So we're both of us are very experienced, and we like to present you with that as an option to consider tonight. Great. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mark Friedman. I was your interim superintendent in the year 2012-13, and I was the person pre preceding your current superintendent. And um, my career goes back to 17 years as superintendent in Libertyville Elementary 
and retired from Libertyville and then uh, took on several interim uh, superintendencies. The first one I did was in Winnetka and I spent a year and a half actually in Winnetka. And then um, I came to District 59 and thoroughly, and I'm not just saying this because you're in front of me, thoroughly enjoyed my, my time in District 59. We did quite a few things. Uh, some things are hopefully still there and other things may not be, but we, we did some wonderful things and I love the people that I work with. And then I moved over to Niles Township High School and took over the two high schools for a year. And then uh, a year ago, I did the Hawthorne School District and that's in Vernon Hills and I was the interim superintendent there. So with that, I've kind of put that in the back burner a little bit. I've concentrated more on searches and Anne's not incorrect. We together, we probably have between 150 and 200 searches under our belt. And again, this is a really critical piece. This is something that's very important as you look at the types of searches that you may be involved in, and there are several ways to go about it, you, um, you wanna make sure that you have experience because this isn't amateur night. So we bring that to you and hopefully as you look around, as you look to District 21 in Wheeling and District 15 in Palatine and District 25 in Arlington Heights and see all the successful superintendents there, you'll say, hey, these are the people that uh, we'd like to have working with us. Not to mention, we are a lot of fun. So we'll bring <laughs> that on. And I was kidding Janice the other day. Uh, the energy level you'll get from us is unmatched. Yeah. So with we, that, any- We do enjoy, we enjoy what we do and we, we like to have, uh, make it enjoyable for you too. Yeah, we want this to be a team thing. It's the board and the consultants and the community and your stakeholders. And we want everybody to feel really good about their say, ultimately, it is you seven folks who are going to make that decision. Right. But there are a lot of pieces of information that can help you with that decision. And we and we take we work for you and we take that very seriously. We're your agents. Uh, every time we're talking about your district, we're representing you. And that's that's important to Mark and me. Exactly. So, Ann, you want to start just I with do. a little quick background, and then we'll dig into the nitty gritty. We have a PowerPoint, which we'll walk you through. Uh, and then we really want to spend some time on the questions that you have. Uh, but Cam, are you going to advance our slides for us? Yes. You know, I think it might be easier if I, so I have the screen share going. Can you all okay. see your slides right now? Okay. Okay, so I think if you just kind of cue me, I can go to the next slide okay. uh, if that we're works. Ready for the, we're ready for the first slide then. You got it. Go for it. The first slide just talks to you a little bit about who we are as a firm. We're BWP and Associates. Uh, and our firm was founded uh, by the Bickert Group, which was actually an Illinois firm. And we then merged with four other national firms uh, including the oldest firm in the nation in 2006 when we became BWP. So Mark and I have been operating from BWP then since 2006. Um, the, the focus of our firm is to provide you personalized local service. So we're a national firm, but we really localize and personalize and customize the search that we're doing for you. And Mark and I work mainly in Illinois, although each of us, both of us have gone out to other states, but we know the suburban area very, very well, as he was explaining to you. Uh, our work is to support you and your, your constituencies as you look for a new superintendent and be able to find the person that matches what you're looking for, uh, for, your, for your staff and your school board and your stakeholders and mainly your students, your kids. I mean, obviously in this COVID area, that's the, era, that's the main thing in front of us right now. And that's the main thing we focus on too. We focus on finding uh, the best person to lead your students. Uh, and we guarantee you that we will provide a uh, diverse pool of candidates. I'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide, but we stake our reputation on uh, being a very diverse firm. So Ben, if you could give me the next slide. So this is who we are now. We have six partners. Mark and I are both partners in the firm and 30 plus associates. And those people are superintendents, both active and retired, uh, university faculty, 
uh, former Board of Education members. And this again comes back to what I was talking for on the former slide, 33% of BWP are women and minorities. And again, that's, we're very proud of that. We're a female and minority owned fir firm. Um, so that's what we, again, we're very proud of that and we wanted to make sure we stress that with you. We have very strong connections uh, in the national, at the national level and at the um, local level. And so we've listed all the organizations that we're involved in and that we network with and that we communicate with um, on a very frequent basis. And we have, the last part of the, that, that bullet point talks to you about the Illinois Association, Association, excuse me, of Latin American School Administrators. That's a new partnership for us. And I think Mark will probably tell you a little bit more about that because he was very instrumental in getting that partnership for our association. Next, Ben, next page. So let's move into the actual process, what your process will include, all of, some of, most of. Again, as Ann just mentioned, we are uh, very flexible. We'll work with you if you want to expand certain things, contract other things, add or subtract. We're pretty open to that. But generally, there is about a, an eight or nine step process to doing a search. So yeah. the first one, if you were to select us, what we would do is we'd establish a planning meeting. We do one virtually pretty much like this, or we could come in person with socially distanced type uh, discussion. And we've done that before. And at that planning meeting, we'd establish the search parameters, set a timeline, put a calendar together, and look at any customized services that you might ask for. Sometimes, you know, districts would have certain things that they wanted that only pertain to them. The second stage would be to launch recruitment efforts, and that would be the start of a marketing campaign. We'd want to post the position on our proven websites. And again, you're going to see IALAS, et cetera. We were actually approached by the leadership of the Illinois Association of Latin American School Administrators and asked if we would partner with them and help, and they would help us to make sure that all of the vacancies that we're working on and all the postings were extensively advertised in the Latinx community. And um, we're really proud of that. And, and right now it's something that we're using in several different places and it seems to be a real asset for us. We'll open our electronic web-based application system. So we use our application system, not yours. And we make contact with potential applicants. Basically, we call people, we contact people, we meet people at networking events whenever those will begin again. We're on a hiatus right now. And we will do the active recruitment piece. The third step of the first phase of the process is to conduct an audit or community engagement process and develop a candidate profile. We can do that virtually or in person. We have done a couple virtually where we've done stakeholder groups and hosted them virtually. And we've also done them under the pandemic umbrella in person with social distancing. So we're, we're good either way. And that's something we would talk about in the planning meeting as to what you would prefer and what your ideas are for something like that. We'll do an online survey of all your stakeholders. So everyone in the district will have an opportunity to give their input, whether they were interviewed at a meeting, whether they took time to, to come to an evening event, they at least would have the online survey opportunity. And then, um, we would interview any of your constituent groups and then create this profile and verify it with all of you at the board. Any questions on that? I mean, as Mark said, we've got a lot of flexibility on how we might work in the COVID area. And I'm doing a search right now where I'm doing some in-person groups and some Zoom groups. So we can we're, we're comfortable really doing whatever you think will work for your community and, and maybe giving you some samples of what we've done in the past. Uh, but we, we're very good with, with moving forward with the electronic uh, Zoom, if that's what you prefer, or a combination, or 
as Mark said, we, we're, we're definitely able to meet in person with people with the social distancing and the, the face masks. So, you know, that's the world we live in and we're comfortable doing that. Um, Mark was talking to you about all, the, all of that work that we would do to get to know the district. Of course, Mark already has a heads up on that because he knows the district so well. But then we really start in on this page where we talk about steps four through six. I but, have a question going back. Sure, so, sure uh, Janice. Yeah, I was just wondering, I think you told me over the phone that you would interview um, board members individually yes. as opposed to a group. And I just wanted to verify that and clarify. You, board members will have an option of a phone, one-on-one -on -one phone interview, one-on-one -on -one virtual interview, or meet somewhere where you can practice social distancing. We're in the area. So yeah. for us, it's really easy to run over and, and meet somebody in a conference room at the district office if you want. But it's one-on-one -on -one rather than a group. Thank you, Janice. Yeah, absolutely. It's one-on-one. -on -one. We want to hear each of you individually. Uh, and once we've done all that, uh, in number four, you'll see here, then we really begin to do some heavy re recruiting. And this is where our um, networking comes in handy and also our firm. You know, we said we had uh, 30 associates, and this is where we we go to them and we say, who do you know that might be a good fit? So those, those are the resources we use. And then we begin to, to really uh, screen those candidates and we'll most likely look seriously at 10 to 12 of those applicants. Mark and I will get together, go through each of the applications, go through what we know about people, who we've talked to about people and narrow that down to 10 or 12 that we really wanna pursue further and we'll We'll either do a Zoom interview or an in-person interview uh, with those applicants. Um, and then we'll do some even deeper research on the ones that we identify as the ones we want to present to you. So then we'll narrow that down to four to six people that we think most closely meet your profile and are thoroughly checked out by Mark and me and are ready to move forward for us to talk to you about that. And then we'll bring them to a closed session. And Mark's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about what we do in that closed session. We do several different things, but he'll explain that on the next page. Yeah, I, I don't know, is there any technical issue? Ben, I lost, the, I lost the picture. I still see everybody, but I don't have the uh, agenda. And I'm fine, I'm working off a paper one, but uh, all I, I see is the word Zoom up. Yeah, I've still got it, Mark. I've got the search process list posted. Okay, maybe I might have lost. You well, might have lost the window, Mark. Um, the the screen share window on your. Yeah, computer. you know, I think I'll just keep it this way rather than go in and try and come back. It's technology. So, uh, as Ann alluded to, the the next phase, the search process steps seven through nine. This begins with um, a board retreat, so to speak, a board meeting with us where we're gonna outline the process for the interviews. We're gonna give you more or less a professional development hour and a half or so. Just for those of you who have done this before a refresher, those of you who have not done this, some do's and don'ts, some of the things that are good to do, sample questions, key rubrics to use in trying to decide between one person or the next. I think what we've seen with boards lately is they really get to a point where they like several candidates. We like all three of these finalists. How do we sort this out? How do we make sure we're picking the right one? And we'll walk you through that, give you some key ideas on how to, how to take that pool and bring it down to the finalists. And that's a really tough piece, especially if what we think, and you're gonna have a really strong pull, it's gonna make it very hard on you, which is good. That's what you want. The board will then, you as a group, will interview one to three finalists. Typically, we used to say you'll have two finalists, but lately, and in these last few years, boards keep telling us, you know, we interviewed six, but we like three, as I just mentioned, and we'd like to, interview them again. And so it's up to you. You want to do that, you can interview them again. So one to three. We've had some instances where board said, we see one person in there and we love this one person and we don't even care to talk to anybody else. That happens too. 
So these are the processes. We're going to prepare you for all of that. We'll give you a schedule. We'll set everything up. You don't really have to do much. And other than if we're doing everything by Zoom, make sure that Ben isn't sick that day. So that all, <laughs> yeah. all the things, all the things that you need to do will be done well. Yeah. And then at the end, believe it or not, this is a really important piece. Number nine is the employing the new superintendent piece. It's amazing how much hangup there tends to be when contract time comes around and how many times we have to get in the middle on behalf of the board to sort out expectations and the reality of things. Now, we will upfront ask candidates what their salary expectations are, where they, you know, they think they'd like to be, so on and so forth. But when it gets down to the end, sometimes people don't always comply with the rules. So we will be there to make sure that works smoothly and to help you through that process. In yeah. addition to your attorney, we're not taking your attorney's yeah. job away. I'd like to give Mark a nice compliment here. He is really good at working, uh, working these things out and you never know. Maybe things go very smoothly and then you begin to, to work on a contract and Mark has a lot of experience of doing that and we usually turn that over to him at that point but, and we get through it and our, our goal is to make everybody happy, the board and the, the candidates so that you can begin on a good relationship and sometimes that takes some work and Mark, as I said, I want to give him a nice compliment about Thank what he is we, doing. We want to create the celebratory mm -hmm. you know, atmosphere rather than well, I signed a contract, but I didn't get what I think I should have gotten. We don't want the, the new candidate, the new person to start off in a negative way. We want it all to be positive. The, all seven board members to coalesce around mm -hmm. the decision and then that person to feel really good about all of that. Yeah, and for the most part, that that's what happens. Yeah, it really does. And you know, I want to throw something in here too. And in step seven, we'll we'll talk to you about building consensus and give you some, you probably already have some ways that you work at your board level, uh, but we'll give you some of ours too that you might find useful in coming to consensus because our goal is to get uh, a happy board and a happy candidate and a 7-0 vote. <laughs> I have uh, two questions. This sure. is Janice again. Um, there are then two rounds of interviews, correct? Right. With the yes. larger number yes. of candidates and then the finalists. Yes. Right. Okay. And then the other question is about the contract. I believe that you will be helping us determine what our contract, our salary parameters are in advance. Correct. Right? Right. So we'll go through a discussion about that. We'll give you, we'll basically give you comparables. Okay. And it's it's pretty easy to do nowadays, and, and especially since we have good relationships with all your neighboring districts because we work there. It's pretty easy to just call up and get the real number, <laughs> not, you know, what gets published sometimes isn't always the real number. So mm -hmm. we will do that for you. And we, again, that last stage, we don't want anything to get in the middle. We want it to work really smoothly and we'll be there to hold, you know, hold your hand, have your back, all that kind of stuff through that process. Definitely. That's the out front work we do. That's the kind of behind the scenes work that we do with the board and um, we're happy to do that. We wanted to, as I said, we wanted to go smoothly. So yeah, I think you're the next page. I got the next page? Yep. Then can you advance it? And now, oh, our, the, the best part, our track record. Uh, so as we were, Mark and I told you, we've been doing this for quite some time and we've done a lot of searches. And so we've got a good record and we're proud of that. The vast majority of our candidates placed since 2006 have completed their first contract. Normally that's a three-year contract. It doesn't always have to be, which we can tell you later, but, but, but we really have a, a large amount of our, most of our candidates have completed that first uh, contract and 95% of them um, approximately have been offered their, their second contract. So that's a good rate. We give ourselves an A on that. Uh, and then the, the, the last point we make is not a single candidate has been, has, uh, been found to have any kind of negligence or criminal. I'm not going to win on that. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully that never happens, but we want to make sure that we say that as well. So we think we got a good, good track record. And there are some reasons we have this good track record, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, and Mark's going to do the next slide, which will explain that to you. Well, that. Uh, Trekker, we actually, one of our colleagues, 
we commissioned him. He's a professor at uh, Concordia University. He actually did this study a year ago. Yeah. And, you know, we'll be glad to share it with you at, at any time. And you can see the depth of that and the satisfaction that the people that we placed have expressed in their placement. And, and, and that's a real important piece. So if you're interested, we can, you know, get that to you down the road. The next page, I wanted to talk about this, make sure that I was really clear with this, our guarantee. We'll be on call throughout the search process and the following year. And why do we say the following year, the new person's already in place? We say that because lots of times little things come up and it's sometimes not a comfortable conversation with the board president and the superintendent or it's just little picky things and and they'd rather have a third party do it. And so we're there to do those kind of things. Hey, take take the superintendent out to lunch. Hey, by the way, you may need to back off on this or you may do some, so we can pass on that information. And you would be surprised how often that happens. Mm -hmm. And um, we've, we've done all kinds of things to, to support new superintendents, giving them resource material and, and new assignments that they've been uh, asked to do by their boards. And that's that little extra stuff. So it doesn't just stop when you hire, it continues. And we mentor that superintendent. Now, that doesn't mean that if you hire somebody who's an experienced superintendent, that they need to be mentored. They'll say, no, I, I've been a superintendent. I know what I'm doing. It's not the mentoring on how to do the job. It's the second set of eyes type mentoring. Here, let's talk about this. Are you having some difficulty? Let us give you a little bit of a second set of eyes when certain problems come up. Or somebody to talk to that you can trust in confidence. So we do that. We've been doing that for years. And it's a popular piece. In other well, words, we just me, don't do the search and run away. To give you a little example, when some of the superintendents this year were trying to decide what to do with going virtual or you know some kind of blended, uh, I got an emergency text from one of the superintendents that we had placed last year. He said, "Can I phone a friend?" And I'm like, "Yes, you know, call me." So all he really wanted to do was run it by me before he put a letter out to his uh, community, but. Uh, it was nice to be there for him to be able to do that. And that's the kind of work we do. Yeah, it's it's a little more than just come in, do the search, and, and then right. disappear. And, and the next bullet point I really want to emphasize, if the selected candidate does not complete two years in the position, and the board remains the same, predominantly the same, if the board changes, seven new people get on for some reason, then um, that's a whole other ball game. However, we've never seen that, but our attorney said put that in there. We will repeat the search for expenses only. And to be honest with you, I think we've, in over 15 years, we've maybe done one or two. Mm -hmm. So, um, and one was a spousal transfer mid-year and the superintendent just up and left and went with her spouse to another part of the country, left the board hanging and, and us hanging. It was a very unusual situation, but we back this up. Mm -hmm. And if it's the third year and there's difficulties, we'll still be around to help get through all of that. Yeah. So guarantee is the two, it's the, it's the standard. However, we're there for more than just the two. And it's, and it's our reputation. Mark says we haven't, I've only had to do this one time. Uh, and it actually was with the high school district I worked with. And they just, they parted ways with their superintendent after two work, two years, and not in exactly in a bad way, but they called and we were able to go back in and find them a, another superintendent. Uh, it was a district I enjoyed working, working with. Um, the board was good to work with. Uh, we had a successful second search. Things are going well. And again, it's our reputation. It's the work we do. So we back it up. Yeah. And the very last bullet point, we will not slate a previously placed candidate in another search for the term of the initial contract unless the board says, go ahead. Yeah. And in other words, say you hire somebody and in the middle of his or her contract, somebody else whispers in there, oh, if you come over to us, we, um, we'll pay you 20,000 more. 
And if we have anything to do with that, we will ethically not allow that to happen. So we stand by that and trust us. This is not an uncommon thing. I agree. So somebody gets into a district, develops a good reputation, before you know it, others are looking. We won't do that to, to anybody that we work with. Yeah, Mark and I have had to have several conversations with candidates just to say, no, that's, uh, that's against our, our ethics and our policy. We, we wouldn't put you in another search at this point. Yeah. So. so those are the phases and the steps in the phases and the background, the guarantee, what we do. And, and now this is just a quick little breakdown on our fees. And when Janice and I were talking, as she said, well, is there one fee and then you're gonna come back and hit us with $10,000 worth of expenses and stuff? No, we don't do that. What you see is the range and we never top out over the top range. So the actual consultant fee is as is. And then basically you could look at probably the lower end of the spectrum. It, it all depends upon how much work we do, how much work we give Cam Terman to do and uh, extra things that you might ask for. So sometimes that will bring the expenses up to the right-hand side of, of, the, uh, of the line. But really there are no big surprises on expenses. And we don't really pay for advertising anymore. If you wanted, I remember Janice and I were talking about Ed Week and it used to be you put an advertisement in Ed Week is a, it's a kind of a, it looks like the Sun Times, but it's an educational journal. And it used to be 50 pages, now it's 12. And there used to be seven or eight pages of job ads in the back. Now there's a half a page. And we find for the cost, $1,000, $1,500, we get no value out of it. We did a study. Our, our research tells us most candidates find out about our positions from online postings from our website that we use and from all those vehicles. So we really, unless you want, we really don't push spending any money on uh, online advertising. Remember the old days, uh, there would be a brochure. Some of you would remember. There would be a brochure with pictures and glossy and it costs thousands of dollars. We don't do that anymore. It's all online. The all online stuff turns out a really good number. So um, there are really no hidden costs, no surprises. We'll let you know anything that comes up, we go through the board president. I mean, our, our contact is the board president. And if we needed something, we would do that. And, and the board president could relate to the rest of the board. So, so that's really pretty simply our fees. And, and we're really proud of it. We, we generally uh, don't have any issues with their contract. It's really simplistic too. So, and that's all built into it. And as, as Mark mentioned before, we're basically local people. So our personal expenses will be minimal. So there's yes, no yes. to worry about that. So now why us? You know, we, yeah, the two of us will walk you through this. Yeah. Go gonna, ahead. We'll go through this together. And we have already mentioned some of these things, but um, we like our. We think we got a great record of success, and um, you know we showed we shared that with you earlier in the presentation. And we have a good reputation. Uh, Mark talked to you a bit about the the surveys we've done lately, and of the superintendents we've placed. One hundred percent of them were satisfied with BWP and the follow up and the work that we did with them. So that was very very gratifying for us because we really. We really try to, to, to do good work for you. Um, resources, the recruiting we talked about. Uh, Mark, chime in here too. Um, the professional networks that we belong to, uh, we customize the searches for you as we talked about. We won't let you make any mistakes, but there's more than one right way to do things. So if you have an idea and you say, hey, will this work? We'll, we'll talk you through it. And if it will work, we're glad to do that. Every search I've ever done is a little different. There are certain things that are the same in all of them, but every community is different and every school district is different. So we customize those searches. Well, uh, that goes back to that flexibility piece that we talked about earlier, that 
you know, we were, we're, you're hiring us and we're working for you. So if you'd like to see things twisted a little this way or a little that way, right. you know, we're pretty flexible. We're pretty open about that. We That's really, the nature of this business. I really want to emphasize number six. We have a record of success in placing female and minority candidates. Uh, knowing I was going to talk to you tonight, we, I went back and I, I keep a list of all my searches and who was placed in them. So I made a tally of the last few years uh, that I've worked. I had 27 searches and 16 of them went to women and minorities. So the only way that happens is if we give you a good pool to look at, a diverse, good diverse pool to look at, and then you pick out the candidate. We, we don't tell you who to hire, but if we present you a good diverse pool and our candidates do well, that's what happens. So I, I think we stand by that and we're proud of our record there and we've done good work in that area. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, it kind of lumped together. You know, our, our local record is unmatched. And if you look all around your district from, from Itasca and Bensonville and Glen Ellen and all those to Bloomingdale, you name it, all those areas, Roselle to your west and a little bit to the south. And then, as I mentioned earlier, District 25, Wheeling 21, Palatine, we just did Palatine last year, fairly similar kind of a demographic. And, and all of them, and just any one of them we, you know, are proud of because they've all worked out so well, not to mention all the Skokie districts and, and Winnetka and several in Lake County. We're really proud Hinsdale. of all that. Hinsdale. And Hinsdale Elementary District. We can give you a list on an arm, arm okay. length long. I know Cam, Cam's trying to keep up with all the, the new references that, that we have because it keeps growing. We've been very busy. Last year was an extremely busy year for us. And we know this area. I know your district. <laughs> no one could say they know this district better than I am who's in the search business. So that's a real positive piece. And we are uh, absolutely committed you know, to working in District 59. There's just no question about it. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm a little concerned about the time where it's already 740. We've got okay. 20 minutes. So, and we have some questions for you. So sure. if, if we can try to go through it. We'll do I'll throw one more thing. There is, sure. I just wanted you to eyeball what a search calendar would look like. And this is one that we did in, in Wheeling District 21. It had a fairly similar timeline that you did. Do you have that? Ben, can you advance it? I think it's the next slide, isn't it? Uh, this is all the slides that we have from what we got. Uh, it's actually a separate document. I have the document. Would you oh, like yeah. me to share it with you, Ben? Yeah. Is that a big, it, would it be a big problem, Camp? It would not, not be at all. a big problem. Just give me a minute to okay. ask. And then we'll we'll go through this really quick, Janice. We want to let I you can ask. I email questions. you, or it's actually on my screen, so it's up to you, Ben. What's if the you, quickest way? Yeah, if you email it to me, um, that would be great. Okay. What? Why don't we start asking some of That's our fine. questions while we're waiting? Sure. Yeah, we'll end on the timeline. Okay. Uh, so, Patty, you have the first one, or do you want me to just run through them? I don't care, whatever is, whatever is most um, efficient. Maybe I should just run through them as quickly as possible. So um, I think you've answered what distinguishes you from your competitors. Um, and <laughs> <You're trying to. laughs> yes, and if there's anything else you wanna add, you can email me. Um, you've told us how much experience you have. Um, what, is an example of a recent superintendent search you did. What went well and what could have gone better? Huh, let's see. We've had we've had a couple where the board has had a hard time making a decision. They they've liked their candidates. I mentioned that earlier, and uh, one was over was over in Comarick, a small little district, and they went down to the wire. And I thought they were gonna go with one person. They went with a, a different person, a second person. And through it, the board president would call and say, yeah, we're having a hard time. We're on different pages. Some people want this person, some people want that person. 
And what we, you know, we reviewed was, again, go back and look at some of these ideas that we shared with you on how to come to a group consensus uh, on a heavy decision like that. He said, yeah, I guess we just got carried away on the next task. And they went ahead and did it. And so that worked out really well. Um, boy, I... Okay, that's okay. That's a great yeah. answer. Here's the uh, tentative calendar is up now. Oh, yeah. quick, real quick. We'll go through that it's real quick. So, so this is really only starting out a couple of weeks ahead of where we would be. So we would superimpose the dates for uh, District 59 into, into this left-hand side. But you see the steps that are included in there. Stakeholder surveys, spend a day in the district or online, interview board members, 30 minute phone conversations. These really are all the tasks that go into a search and is spread out so you can kind of see it. We have it in our PowerPoint, but this puts it like in your hand. Okay, these are the dates we need to know. Put it in my calendar, be able to follow along with this. And it worked out really well in Wheeling. We used to use another model and we've, we've kind of adopted this for districts now because it was, it's so comprehensive. Sometimes we have to change things out. Sometimes we have to add or subtract, but it's a good baseline and it's good for board members to see, yes, you got some time to give to this over the next couple of months. Good, I like it. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Uh, what does 21st century teaching and learning mean to you and how does it differ from earlier models? And I ask because We've really moved away from the way we were doing things under, under Dr. Fessler. And a lot of what we're doing now, we want to continue doing. And it's not the same as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So how would you then think about this? Because we'd want a leader that could embrace where we're trying to continue to go. Well, for, from my perspective, I don't know how you feel about this, Anne. That would come out as we create the profile. Mm -hmm. So as we're interviewing board members and we're talking to stakeholders in your community and we're getting a thousand or 1500 responses to our online survey, the information we're going to get is gonna give us a whole lot of information about the culture, the mm -hmm. direction, the type of academic program the district's working with. And that gives us sort of a sorting point for the candidates as they apply. So okay. we use your information. We don't come in with a preconceived notion of what 21st learning, 21st century learning is because 21st century learning in district 59 and 21st century learning in district 15 may be completely different. They may have Correct. Their, their ideas may be so different that you wouldn't even know the, same, the two had the same title. I so, guess there, there might be some input that I'd want to see whoever we hire look to the um, administration to find out some of that because as board members, we understand it, but not the way that, you know, teachers and district leadership does. So, right. so that and, that's would, an, and that'll be an important group for us to talk to as well, your administrator, yeah. your principals. Yeah, that's, the people um, on, on Ben's level you know, the central office administration, your principals, assistants, mm -hmm. will want to hear their thinking and get information from them to help form this profile. And th this profile really does drive how we screen. And Janice, okay. we'll help you. The other thing we'll do is help you develop some questions that you can use to get at that with your candidates too. Yeah. We'll do yes. the, the workshop Mark was talking about. And that'll yeah. be important for you guys to have questions that'll address that. Good, good. Yeah, and I guess the same thing, uh, the same answer probably applies, but, uh, you know, we want to know uh, to make sure that we have an understanding and that you have an understanding of what skills are needed in a, a you know, superintendent leading a very highly diverse district. Yep. And hopefully, you know, yep. it even better than we do. So that is something that is going to matter deeply. That'll to be us. very crucial to know. Yes, very yeah. much so. So um, what are your ideas for involving the community in the search? Are you suggesting both focus groups and electronic surveys? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Ann. That gets, that gets everybody a chance. What we want to do is give everybody a chance. 
If they would like to participate in a focus group, they, they can. Not everybody wants to do that so they can have the survey, but nobody can tell you they didn't have a chance to participate. And that's our goal. We want everybody to have a chance. Okay. You know what we're finding is that since we've gone heavy into electronic surveying, the attendance at these in-person meetings, even before pandemic, the attendance was dwindling. People wouldn't come out because I can do this online survey. Yeah. Well, we'll have to try to figure out how to make sure we are able to reach the broadest number of people because we right. want to be very transparent and make sure we've got the, you know, the the feeling of the community yes. and the parents. And we will. <laughs> and, and again, we do our survey in Spanish and in English. That's so right. with and Janice, that's, our, that's our goal too. We'll back you up in that because that's our goal too. Again, we want everybody to say they had a chance. Right. No. We'd also probably like to see it in Polish, which is our next largest group. We could um, we could do that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can do that as long as you have a, a translator to help us. We do. We, okay. do, we do it regularly. At Niles High School, we had this survey in how many languages, Mark? Uh, like twelve. <laughs> no, so we're there's forty three languages there, but uh, oh well, we got language. them beat. We got seventy seven. Yeah, zero. I know. That's okay. We'll you work with your, your department on that. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, how long does the typical search take then? Um, and looking at your schedule, I didn't figure that out. It's about 12, well, 12 to 14 weeks or so. Okay. This right. year, uh, there's a big obstacle that always slows the search down, and that's always been a fall search gets hung up on Triple I Conference. Why? We don't have that this year. We won't <laughs> right. have that this year. So we'll just breeze right through. We get a whole right. week back this year. Okay. All right. Um, so one of my uh, board members asked if we could speak with all the possible candidates by phone. And I don't know how many that is. It could be 30 to 40, you told me on the phone. I'm not sure we would need that. No, I think that's something we want to talk about. Okay. In the planning meeting and the practicality of something like that. Right. Or I think that who, would... And some of it, candidates have to give permission for their information to be seen. And, you know, again, you hire a search firm so that mm -hmm. you can, we can do confidential stuff. If you do it, it becomes foyable. And so all the things that we do in the background are not. So we're, right. we're actually in good shape to be able to do the kinds of things like screen out candidates that you tell us we're not interested in so-and-so. Right. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And you can also vet them. So not everybody right. should be yes. qualified. Yes. You as job. board members, you, you know, I'm sure Janice and Mardell, you may have even seen this in the last time you did a search, but you as board members will be approached by people. And they're going to say, oh, I've got a great candidate for this job, or I'm a good candidate for the job. And it's one of those things that would be nice for you to say, well, that's not our responsibility. We we'll pass it over to the uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't Get want you to off the hook. Right. Thank you. We don't want you having to do that. Right. Preparing us to do. I have one more question, and then I'm going to ask the board if they have any. Um, so with the interview process, are you expecting the full board to form the interview committee for both phases, first round and second? Yes. Okay. Yes. I know some some groups do interview committees. So you can. We've you had can. that. Yeah. Okay. If that's in the planning meeting, if that's what you select, we'll work around that. We'll work around that. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? That's all the questions I have. I'd like to throw it open to the board to ask you, board members, Absolutely. Uh, what questions you have. The um, it, Janice, just to clarify, these are just free questions or the ones off the chart? Uh, you can ask any question you want. Yeah. I, oh. I, have a, I have a quick question. The uh, Are you seeing a drop in qualified candidates due to COVID? Is, are you seeing candidates not wanting to leave their positions because of COVID? Interesting. We talk about that, Robert. I mean, that is a conversation that our team had a couple of weeks ago. We had a company meeting and we're really not seeing that. We're hearing people express, hey, you know, I want to get through this year and we'll worry about next year down the road. But there's also 
we we're getting interest. Is there any job? What are you guys doing? What's yeah. coming up this year? So there are career move interests that are no different than any other year. Robert, Mark and I are each doing a, 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 a search right now that are for some smaller districts. So not, not that it would be com competition with yours. And honestly, I think it's about normal. We're really, I got, a, I had a call right before I got on Zoom with you guys from a candidate. So I think I'm about at the normal place I would be. Don't you, Mark, in the search yeah. you're doing? Yeah. Last spring, yeah, I don't think that was a little, last spring was a little touch and go. I did have a candidate drop out because he didn't want to leave his district. But last spring was different. We didn't know what was going to happen. So I think once people get in schools in place, if they're ready to look, they'll look. I, I have four uh, appointments, phone conversations set up with people who are on career spiral upward and are interested in, in the superintendency. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten my name from somebody and Ann does the same thing. Right. And they just want to talk about well, what do you see out there? What can I do to make myself marketable? All those kinds of things. So the interest is there, Robert. I agree. I agree, Robert. I have a question. Just since this is my fourth <laughs> superintendent search. Well, I, I, do you I, want to join our team, Mardell? Do you <laughs> get us? Well, I can remember all the things we've done in the past with the different candidates. And one of the things that to me is the very, very most important thing is to go to their district and speak with their principals and their union people and whoever else is in the schools, which we've done with all of our candidates. Speak to the, the parents, the PTO, the public, and so forth. And, and you get a completely, just even walking through the school with a candidate, you get a completely different judgment on the person than you do just talking to them as a board in the early stages. We actually had a candidate we were very high on. And after going to that person's school and seeing how she reacted with the people in her school, we got a completely different. Yeah, something different yeah. So I think it's very important that we can do some of this stuff in Zoom, but it's also very important that we actually get into the schools and be with the people who we are, going, we are considering. And then my other question was, because you have worked in so many of the districts that are close by, some of us on the board are very familiar with some of the board members in these other districts. Are we forbidden to speak with those board members? No, no, I actually, I told Janice, please call Phil Pritzker in uh, Wheeling. The reason I bring his name up is he was president of the uh, Illinois School Boards Association. Around and, the time, I know. You know call, call him, call, call um, Palatine. Palatine. Please call him. We want you to, absolutely. Oh, in Heights and Palatine and Wheeling and and Glen Ellen and some of the other ones. Dave Arlington. Page is no, I, I don't yeah. think Dave Page is on the board in Arlington Heights anymore. No, no, he's not. No, and he, he was a great board president to work with. He yeah. still works with um, his we can Worked out really well, but we can get you other names. Yeah, if you could send them to me, please, because I will want to check references. Um, okay. We're glad to do that. Great. Okay. Sure. Um, any other questions? Oh, did you want to address the walkthroughs of other, uh, of superintendent's districts. I think you say somewhere in your documentation that you support that or not. It's, it's a it's an option that the board has. Yeah. We'll, we'll set them up. What we're seeing, boards choose to, as Mardell outlined it, do that site visit or they say, you know, we know enough and we don't need that. We can see enough online. So we haven't seen a lot of boards doing it lately, I have to say. It's their option, we'll get it all set, but they're choosing not to. And, and they're local. And these aren't where you have to travel somewhere. These, right. these are just, uh, they're local, they're in the area. But I think the fact that they're local is also that the candidates are local right. and there's a lot more known about them. Right, we didn't do it with Dr. Fessler either. Um, okay, does anyone else have a question? Because we've only got three minutes left before we I have a question, if I could jump in. Um, sure. And Anne, thank you so much for your presentation. I was really intrigued by the mention of some of the partnerships that you've developed um, with the Latino Association. And I guess I'm wondering, your associates, I'm assuming, do a lot of the research legwork and this piece. I'm wondering when you hire your associates for your firm, what you are looking for in terms of what 
they bring to the table? Like, what is your focus? Is it about what networks do they have? Is it about their research prowess? Like, what are what are you looking for? All those things, yeah, all yeah. those things. Today, today, uh, I had lunch with Jim Gay. It's not a secret. He's he's retired from high school district two thirty. It's Sandberg, Stag, Andrew. It's big high school district in Orland Park. And the specifics were he wanted to talk about, as soon as he's done retiring, working on searches with us. And we had a nice two-hour conversation and I gave him uh, the overview. And he said, I really would like to do that. He would bring a dimension we don't have, a straight high school person. Many of us are elementary folks in our background. Mm -hmm. So that type of thing happens a lot. Well, the Courtney, what we've got is a, a group of people who bring a lot of different things to us. For, uh, for instance, our managing partner, Deborah Hill, was the national president for ASCD, international, actually, we're an international organization. So she did that. Another one of our partners, Sheila Harrison Williams, was very involved in NAPC and ran a, a number of aspiring superintendents uh, workshops. She did that for 10 years. So she brought, helped us bring in a lot of minority candidates through that. Uh, so we look for people who bring in different pieces and who've had some success in their career and work well with school boards. I mean, you know, you could, that's like the, the key. We've got to be able to work well with school boards. So those are things that are, that are always uh, important to us. And we like people from different parts of the country and different parts of the state uh, so that we can pull that lat to, uh, together and offer you a very diverse team to work with. Mark and I, I mean, a very diverse team behind us. Yes. <laughs> Some thank you. Behind us. I want to thank you very much for your time. We're going to have to uh, end this right now because it's now 8 o'clock. We could go on and on. So no, I know okay. you can. So what I'd like to ask the board is to forward me any additional questions that you did not get answered tonight. And I will make sure to get those answers and get them back to you. I want to thank you so much. I thank know you. that you're a top-notch firm, and I know that you could do a really great job for us, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. It's so good to see you, Mardell and Janice, so you after too, all these you. years. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet all of you, Courtney, Robert, Randy. Nice to meet all of you, Patty. Nice talking. I'd like to see you at the conventions. Remember, we used to meet. I know. We can't do that this year. I know. <laughs> All really right. Out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so, so much. much. Cam, thank you so much for taking care of this. Have a good ben, evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ben. All right. Zoom out. All right. Yeah. So oh, I'm out. Mark and Ann, I'm going to remove you okay. now. Take us out because I'm, out. Bye, right. ben. I'm disconnected. Right, thank you. <laughs> I still see Ann. I'm, yeah, yeah, I still see Anne. you guys. Too. Yeah, see <laughs> All right. So have we been joined by any new people yet? Yeah, J Jake and Tim are in the waiting room. So if you're oh, ready, let them in. Are you yes. ready? Thank you, please. All right, hang on one second. Let me close these tabs real quick. And I'm sorry, you guys. I thought we'd have more time. I didn't realize. I should know. Marcus really enjoys talking. Right. So. But they answered a lot of questions that we that were on the chart. Correct. Jake and Tim are in the room. I think they're connecting. I see Tim. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And there's Jake. All right, Jake, you're All muted. Right. You come into the meeting. There you go. Hi, so glad to have you with us. Thank you, Tim and Jake. Um, they're with uh, SEC. And uh, that was the firm that gave us our current superintendent. So with that, I'd like uh, to have you take it away. Okay, I'm gonna try and grab the screen. You know what, Tim, why don't, I think it's gonna work better. I, I can just run your presentation for you if you're okay. You just know what, that, that works play. wonderful for All us. Right. Good deal, okay, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll run that for you. You guys just let me know when to advance the screen, if you don't mind. Perfect. Well, thank you uh, for all of your, your time this evening. We're really excited about the opportunity to, to speak with you and share a little bit about the process from our end of things. and and certainly field any questions that you have. Um, you know, it's a great, a great time to be starting a, the, the process this, this time of the year, certainly not given this, the circumstances we're under, but uh, that's okay. Um, and certainly on the heels of your, your recently developed strategic plan, I think you're gonna be a, a fantastic 
a location and a, really a, a destination for somebody that's going to want to serve in this capacity moving forward. And just so you're aware, Jake and I will be the ones that will be doing the search. We'll be the ones that will be at the meeting. Uh, so the faces and the voices that you hear tonight uh, will be with you from start to finish. There will be no additional people um, and no one that, that's not here joining us. So with that said, I'm going to allow Jake to introduce himself and then I'll come back around and do the same for me. So good evening. Uh, my name is Jake Chung and I want to thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Um, it's an honor to meet with all of you virtually and to represent School Exec Connect. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you for being a, a volunteer um, in, in serving on the Board of Education. I think that sometimes people forget that you're all volunteers as a whole. And I just want to thank you for the positive impact that you have on your students and staff on a daily basis. Um, as Tim had mentioned, our firm has a wonderful track record and we do place outstanding superintendent candidates into dynamic school districts, much like yours. I'm currently the superintendent of Salt Creek District 48. Um, it serves portions of Elmhurst, Oak Brook, Oak Brook Terrace and Villa Park. I'm also excited to share that I'm a former District 59 student. Um, I attended Ruckley School in kindergarten and I was a second and third grade student at John Jay. Uh, my father also used to own a True Value hardware store uh, in Elk Grove. It was on Arlington Heights and Higgins and uh, right next door to the Jairus Bakery. So um, I would get a sugar cookie after kindergarten each day. And um, I'm happy to report that I had a wonderful District 59 education. And I have a lot of positive memories from your school district. Um, I'm also proud to share out that I've worked with uh, many marginalized students and um, throughout my uh, career and have created a community-based uh, outreach program here in Arlington Heights. Um, it's called the Dryden Place Project. And one of the highlights of our community is a community garden that is still thriving to this day. I'm also a resident of Arlington Heights and it would definitely be an honor to facilitate a superintendent search for the school district that has provided me so much. Thank you. Tim? Ready? Thank you, Jake. Um, I'm Dr. Tim Shemp. Uh, I've been a superintendent in Yorkville School District uh, for, this is my eighth year now. Uh, it's a district uh, pre-K-12, uh, about 6,500 students and 900 employees. Um, prior to that, I oversaw uh, as an assistant superintendent all the teaching and learning for our unit district for three years. And then in previous roles, I've, I've served as a, a principal um, student services area of guidance counselor dean i was at hinsdale central for eight years and started my career at leiden high school working with special needs students uh, and then i was a department chair there member of many organizations including luda iesa um, the suburban superintendents association um, i have four four kids of my own uh, one more going to finish high school this year um, i actually went to high school in arlington heights i went my parents sent me private but i used to take the train from um, you know, to and from school most days. And, um, but so I have some roots back in, in that area as well. Um, and I've recently completed some successful searches in Urbana, uh, Lake Park, and most recently in Lake Zurich. Uh, so we're really excited about the opportunity. You know, for me, it's, it's a great chance to give back um, to our, our, our educational industry, uh, to work with board of educations like you um, to learn uh, as we continue to grow. Uh, as, a, as a district that I'm in, um, you know, there's things that we can learn as we talk to candidates, as we talk to all of you, and as we, we uh, obviously then place the final uh, individual. So School Execs Connects uh, is success is really defined by our outstanding placement rate, uh, the longevity of our leaders that we place, our repeat client districts, and our long lasting relationships that we have with our, our boards. Um, our recruiting and interview processes have proven to be successful in resulting in a large pool of outstanding candidates. And we really pride, pride ourselves on the communication that we hold with the boards that we work with. Um, as you are aware, we've uh, facilitated over 400 successful searches since 2004. And our superintendent search process has been very successful. Um, we have a track record of placing over 96% of our placements in a successful placement. Um, and if you take a look at our last seven of our nine placements, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, School Exec Connect has placed women and minority candidates. 
Uh, we have an active partnership with the Illinois Association of Latino Administrators, along with their national chapter, the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents. Um, in addition, we have hundreds of professional associates and contacts that we're able to utilize nationwide. Um, I've served as the Illinois Association of Personnel Administrators and has served on their board as their membership chair and have contacts in many school districts uh, throughout the state. Tim is a highly respected superintendent is known throughout the state as well. Um, I have complete confidence in our ability to find community consolidated school district 59, the best superintendent candidates. So with that said, we're gonna get into more of the specifics of the search process. Uh, this is gonna go into more detail of what you see if you have the proposal on page 10. Uh, so each of the four areas that I'll speak to, Jake may interject as we go, um, but I'm gonna get, get right into it. So if you wanna go to the next slide, so really the, the search process would begin uh, as soon as we would, um, you would select us, if that was the case, and we would sign a letter of agreement. Once that's done, we would work with um, Janice to develop a, a timeline of a planning meeting with all of you where we'd come together and we would really lay out from start to finish the scope and, and the, 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 the timeline of our services. And as you'll hear us probably say multiple times during this presentation, the timeline and the scope of services is all very flexible. That's gonna be based upon that planning meeting with each of you. From there, we're gonna set a meeting um, to, to start creating the new superintendent profile. We would start with the Board of Education um, and we would interview all of you to determine the qualifications, the skills and the experiences that all of you are looking for in your next leader. Also in this, this interview process, we're gonna talk about the type of search that the board would like to engage in. There's either a confidential search or an open search. And really the difference is the open search is where the three final candidates are known to the community. They're, they're announced, you know, people, it's, it's very, very evident who the three finalists will be. The confidential search is really the, the one where the only the final candidate uh, is known uh, to the community. Um, and the process, you know, for a confidential search might at times, you know, produce a richer set of candidates because people might be more apt to apply um, because they're not gonna upset their current district they're in because this job is likely gonna, gonna attract many sitting superintendents. Um, and they're not gonna, you know, you know, risk the embarrassment if they're not selected. With that said, the open search uh, is also a very common process where it's um, much like both of them, you know, you're going to have committee structures, you're going to have interview structures, we're assuming. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to get feedback along the way from different stakeholder groups. So whichever, whichever direction the board would go, um, we're going to put that in, in place to make sure that the feedback mechanisms are there. But at that initial meeting with the board, we will talk about whether the board wants an open search or a confidential search. From there, we're going to we'll also be engaging to create that profile um, many different stakeholder groups. You will help us to determine which ones those are, to hold focus groups and open forums. Everyone from certified and non-certified staff, you might get your fire chief, your police chief, all the different municipality leaders, your clergy, um, students, union membership. So we would decide as a group which focus groups we wanna conduct. And we would spend probably a good two days in your district and we would we would do it all different hours of the day to make it convenient for your, your different stakeholders um, with multiple time slots. The focus groups would be likely between 10 and 15 people. Sometimes they can get up to 20 people that you would help us target as far as who you want at those meetings. Um, and then the open forums would be more, more flexible as far as your parents or it might be after school and your staff could come, the additional staff could come. And really the focus of those is gonna be on we're gonna identify the strengths that as perceived by the different stakeholder groups. We're gonna talk about what they perceive as opportunities for growth in your community and in your school district. They're gonna identify some of the skills and characteristics of what the community and what the stakeholders would like to see in the next superintendent. And then maybe some of the immediate priorities um, that the different stakeholders would say, you know, the next superintendent, when they come in, we'd really like them to focus on this, whatever those priorities are. And what we're really gonna do is look for the themes that come out from each of those um, focus groups and those open forums. 
We're going to take copious notes. We're going to ask follow-up questions. Um, in parallel to that, we're going to open up a survey that we'll develop with all of you. It'll be a, a survey tailored to your district and allow staff and community members to give input into the process. So if they don't attend a focus group, if they don't attend a forum, there's still an opportunity for them to give feedback. And again, we're going to talk about some of the educational strengths as perceived. We're going to talk about some of the priorities and the areas of greatest importance uh, for the new superintendent coming in, as well as the characteristics and the skills. One of the things that uh, Tim started to talk about were our stakeholder groups. And we know that um, District 59 has a very diverse population of stakeholders. Um, we want to provide an active voice for those constituents. So as an example, we know that the Hispanic population is a larger subgroup for the school district. Um, we would work with the school district to provide busing and a Spanish interpreter uh, to bring stakeholders into those open forums. Um, the Oasis mobile home and displays is an area that we might possibly look at. Other areas might include the Orion Parkview apartments where I grew up as a child. Uh, we can also provide district-wide surveys in both Polish and facilitate a Polish-speaking forum as well if the board saw that as an option. So once we gather all the quantitative and qualitative data, um, we're going to sit down and Jake and I are going to spend hours going through that and basically create a profile. A profile of, you know, everything short of being a, you know, a god because it's, you know, there's going to have 15 characteristics and skill sets that um, are gonna be identified, but that's gonna be really important as we start to um, start interviewing and attracting candidates uh, to make sure that one, they feel that they're a match for the job that you're looking for and that the people that we bring you are a match for what your community says is most important. So we will provide that profile to all the board and you ultimately then will approve that at a take action on it at a board meeting in the, in the future. Um, so then we really, we move to the, the next phase, which is the developing of the, the candidate pool. Um, and this really begins with the search process and the calendar to be posted on your district's website, the one that we've created as, as a collective group. And we think it's really important for that to be right on the website, to be very clear and updated as we go. If any changes are made that the, the district makes those changes on the website, because it's, we want the community to know that um, it's a very clear and professional process. It's a transparent process. We know we work for the board. So we're going to be very deliberate to make sure that, you know, we're representing you in the highest regard with the level of integrity that we know you want out of this process. And we also want the candidates, we know they're going to go to your website to research your district, to find the, the most updated information, to look at the past and what's being, being done with your strategic plan and such. So we want to make sure when they go there, they're able to see the clear description and, and the timeline there. Um, we know that if we go through a transparent process with all of you, that's integrity ridden, um, it's going to have the, the best chance of success for when that superintendent is seated uh, with all of you in the, in the future. Because your community is going to embrace the, the process, they're going to embrace, embrace the final candidate and, and be able to start off on the right foot. Um, the next phase of that is going to be the vacancy. And we're going to talk about that again at our planning meeting, but we're going to advertise that both nationally and statewide. It'll be posted on the school exec website. Um, and that we, we do that. So when they apply, we don't want any issues with FOIA, either for the candidates themselves or for the Board of Education in 59. So any of the, any of the applicants will be applying through our website and not you know, your website at the district. Um, you will ultimately decide what advertising you would like. You know, we can look at Education Week, we can look at AASA, uh, we can look at some of the uh, other ones that Jake mentioned earlier uh, with the, the other organizations that we partner with. Um, so we'll talk about that as a collective group. Um, we also have 60 plus uh, networking consultants across the country who, as soon as we know we're going to start working with you, we're going to shoot emails out to superintendents across the country, but we're also gonna be interacting and communicating with our network of consultants um, to start helping us in the search to get people outside of just Illinois. Um, so that email will go, go out as soon as we know that um, we're moving forward with, with you as, as in partnership. And then as Jake and I have talked about, we are connected to 
you know, with the suburban su school superintendents, with the Mid America Association of School Superintendents, all the other organizations that each of us uh, belong to. Uh, so we know that we're going to have a rich group of candidates that'll be interested uh, in this position and be able to attract them uh, pretty aggressively. Um, so we, once that's finalized, we will start our process e immediately. Um, we will do uh, the initial screenings of the candidates. Um, we don't do phone interviews or video screenings typically. Now, obviously that'll be something we'll talk about with the board given the this current state that we're in. Uh, but we do believe in the value of the face-to-face -face interactions and the screenings. So we're likely for this position, I could see us interviewing and screening up to 20 candidates initially um, without, without question. Uh, but we wanna see how they interact in that type of setting. We wanna observe their body language, their mannerisms, how we, they, they, their interpersonal skills and their professional dress. So that's really important for us. Um, even if you know Jake and I are, are wearing masks and we, we, we ask them to be behind a screen, we will figure out a way to do the face-to-face -face piece of it. If there are in, in internal candidates, we're gonna ask that they follow the same process as the external candidates. Um, and we're only going to bring you those that are competitive to the rest of the pool. Now, if there are, there's a candidate or two that, that's internal that you've told us in advance that you want them in that final slate that we ultimately bring to you, obviously we're going to honor that request, but we're going to still do the initial screening so that we can give the Board of Education feedback based upon our impressions of not knowing them. Um, but that'll be something, again, that we're going to ask that if if that, that initial meeting with all of you, or when we do the interviews, if you have somebody in mind, or you have names of people that you, they, again, they have to go through us um, to, to go through the vetting process and to make, and we want us to be able to make the contacts to them um, for, the, for the position. Um, and then once we have gone through our vetting process, our goal is to narrow it down to five to seven um, candidates to bring to you. We are not going to bring those to you if we have not started to vet them with reference and background checks already. Uh, we will use our network uh, and the high level vetting that, that we're gonna do uh, prior to bringing any candidates to you. If there's any questions that we have or something comes up in our, our reference checks or search process, but we still feel they're a worthwhile candidate, we're gonna disclose that to you uh, and make sure that you're aware to make sure that it's someone that you wanna bring forward or not. Ultimately, it's you're going to be your decision who you want to, to bring, bring forward for the final five to seven. Um, so that they will certainly be checked and, and, and vetted prior to anything coming to you uh, for the, the final piece of it. Um, once we bring the final five to seven and you have agreed to which ones you want to interview, we will go back to all the applicants who we did interview and we will let them know they didn't move forward. Um, you know, the ones that we did interview that weren't selected to move forward, we will go back and, and make sure they're communicated with by phone. We'll make a voice-to-voice a, a -voice contact with them, um, knowing that, again, we want to make sure that their impressions of your school district, whether they got the job or not, is the high, of high integrity and a very professional process. Um, so that's, that's very important to us. And being sitting superintendents, Jake and I very much know what it means to work and to uh, work on behalf of a board and for a board. Um, and then lastly, uh, when we get to the, the phase D, um, it's really the, the, the time where we're gonna bring the five to seven and you're gonna start the interview process. We will spend time with all of the board members here uh, going through a interviewing workshop. We will provide an opportunity to talk about the do's and the don'ts of interviewing we will work with you to make sure that um, the slate of questions that you have is thorough enough for what you need. We will give you questions, but then obviously you might have some of your own. So we will help you develop and put that, those forms together and that process together. Um, you may want us, when you do the first five to seven um, candidate interviews, you might want us to help facilitate that. That's just something you'll have to let us know. Some boards do, some boards don't. Um, but that'll be a discussion that we'll have either in the beginning or along the way. Um, and ultimately your goal will be to narrow that slate down to three candidates. Um, and then once the three is, is selected, um, we, would, we would recommend that you bring together different stakeholder groups of staff and parents 
and community members um, to meet the sub semi-finalist in a structured process where each individual um, stakeholder has an opportunity to give feedback uh, to you anonymously or at, at least uh, discreetly so uh, all voices can be heard. Because um, ultimately what we want is the reason for the stakeholders is to give the board more information to make a decision uh, as you start narrowing the process down. During that time frame, when we narrow it down to three candidates, we're also going to ask that they make a formal presentation um, to the board of somewhere between 10 or 15 minutes in length. Um, usually the board will give them um, a topic of, for the presentation or they'll give them you know, one to three topics that they can choose and they're going to present to the board. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to see how do they prepare, how comfortable they are when they speak in front of a group. Um, you know, can they be precise or they, do they drag on in their style? Um, so it's just a, a way for you to assess, you know, are they going to, uh, is something you're going to be able to work with over a long period of time. Um, and then once that round is, is done of the three candidates, the board will come back and, and conduct a second set of, set, of, set of interviews. Typically it's with the finalists, but it might be an opportunity for the board to bring back two of that three and you know, you, there's some boards who take, take, take them to dinner and they're an, an informal process uh, of such, or they'll, they'll, they'll share a meal at the, at the district office or, or another location um, and just have a more of an informal interaction. Um, some of them will break it off and, and some of the board members will spend one, one part of the night with them and then they go to the other uh, board members for the other part of the night. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk through that again with the board and ultimately your, your decision um, what that second set of interviews will, will be and whether it's with a finalist or with um, you know, two of them. And then when you're at a point where you're gonna make a final decision, we are gonna encourage that um, all of the board members uh, pick basically two individuals to call on behalf for reference checks. And it could be two that we will help provide the names to. Uh, it could be two that we, we haven't talked to yet in the district that the individuals are coming from. Um, but then we would have a good sampling of another 14 references uh, that you as a board have done in addition to all the work that we have done as, as the consultants. Um, there is an option that some boards do for site visits um, to their, their current districts. And obviously, depending on where we are with COVID, depending on whether they're an out-of-state or an in-state candidate, all of those factors might play into what the board's desire is. But many times that can be uh, inherent value and it, some more insights can be gained. And then lastly, we will work with you and, and, and go through the process of negotiating and taking action on the, the, the finalist um, superintendent's contract. And we will provide all of you at note a list of superintendent compensation packages. If you give us the comparable districts you would like us to, to look at, um, then we will provide that information for you so at least you can see um, what surrounding districts or com competing districts look like uh, related to compensation packages. Um, As you can see, our search process is very thorough and it has a proven track record of being very successful. Um, we have the ability to search locally, regionally, and nationally, and I can guarantee you that there will be a strong interest for this superintendent's position. Uh, Community Consolidated School District 59 is known as an incredibly progressive school district. Uh, the more you research about the school district, the more you fall in love with what the school district has to offer. Uh, the strong early childhood programming, the diversity within the school district, the support provided both students and staff, uh, will attract many, many candidates. So it's imperative for us to get the message out about this particular opening. Um, as we've mentioned before, we will work with district staff and board to engage your stakeholders. Their feedback will be our friend. The themes we generate from the data collected will resemble works um, from my dissertation uh, as an example, but they'll be very comprehensive and uh, we'll make sure that the information provided, provided to us gives us a uh, strong understanding of what general themes are coming out of the information that has been shared with us. Um, one of the things that both Tim and I are able to do um, is that we both have a strong ability to aggressively recruit and attract talent. 
Um, we will utilize our networking skills to give you a broad range of different candidates. As Tim had talked about before, um, from phases A through D, it really provides us an opportunity to be transparent with the board on what the search will be like. It's also an opportunity to support the board in a variety of different ways when looking for the best fit superintendent candidate. Um, this is an opportunity for us as a search firm to go over and above to support the board. And we can provide training to the board um, when looking at interviewing techniques or basic look for us as candidates respond to different information. The detailed process will also allow us to support superintendent, uh, superintendent candidates. Candidates know and trust our firm and Tim will talk uh, next about our guarantees. Yeah, and, and kind of going on off what Jake said too, I think there's both of our backgrounds and our current positions. Um, again, I, and I don't know who else you're, you're interviewing and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're bringing fantastic um, firms to the, to the, the table tonight. Um, but both of us are, are in the field right now. I think that, you know, when we talk about writer's workshop, when we talk about curriculum alignment and development, uh, we both have a strong curriculum background. We both have an extensive budget and um, strategic planning background. So we're doing the role. We've done it very successfully, uh, whatever roles we've been in. And I think that that's important as we speak to candidates and we generate that new superintendent profile for all of you. And we, we're out there trying to attract and speak to and sell your district to the ideal candidate who's going to fit your needs the best for, for long term. We don't want you to go through this again, uh, you know, in, until you have to down the road until the board desires to. So with that said, I, wanna, I do want to talk about the guarantees. Um, so if for some reason, those five to seven candidates that we bring to you and you say, you know what, Tim, Jake, we don't want to hire any of them. Um, we will continue to bring candidates forward for just the actual expenses for Jake and I. There's going to be no additional fees, no charges uh, to the, the, the fees that we, we've, we've provided you already. Additionally, if, if the superintendent would resign in the first two years or be dismissed for any reason uh, from the start date, again, we will do the search for no additional fee. Um, you will only pay the actual expenses of, of the search it's, itself. Um, and then lastly, over the, the life of the, the first two contracts, so typically uh, the, the first six years, uh, none of our consultants, School Exec Connect, will not um, recruit or um, try and attract um, your superintendent for any other position. Um, now, we can't promise that another board somewhere else won't try and you know, steal a superintendent, uh, your superintendent, but uh, we, we promise you that certainly no one from School Exec Connect will, will do that. Um, within the first two contracts. Um, as you can see, in terms of the search costs or consulting fee for the search would be $18,500. The amount can be adjusted if the level of services are reduced. Um, we can definitely talk about that. Um, we, both Tim and I will be the uh, sitting superintendents um, that will be conducting the search. We understand what it takes to be in today's superintendent's world. As active superintendents, um, we have a strong understanding of the day-to-day -day operations that take place within the school district. Um, we're excited to uh, be considered for the search. We'd be dedicated. Um, we'd be active participants in helping the district find the best superintendent candidate and um, we participate in superintendent searches because we feel that it makes us stronger superintendents in the long run. And it also gives us an opportunity to give back to our professional um, field as well. Um, regular expenses would not exceed $1,500. Tim had talked about advertising costs. Um, we can take a look at a comprehensive advertising campaign for the school district. And we would also encourage the school district to do a uh, background check as well, just to rule out any criminal background um, history that may not have been fully disclosed at the beginning of the process. Jake, may I ask a question? Sure. I'm interested to hear, I see it certainly as a positive that both you and Tim are current superintendents and bring that network that I'm sure is significant on both your ends. I guess I'm wondering about the flip side of that because I recognize having been a board member for a little over a year, just the tremendously huge job that it is to be a superintendent. So I'm wondering how you balance, you know, this with your day job and your family and your other commitments. 
Sure. So Tim and I both have a strong track record of being workaholics um, as, as a general piece of information about us. Um, we keep long hours, whether it's early in the morning or late into the evening. So we understand that we have a responsibility toward our district, but we also have the flexibility to work um, in this capacity to help other school districts engage in a search process for the right superintendent. So we love what we do, as I had just mentioned. Um, as we participate in searches, it's a great opportunity to validate not only the great things that we're doing in our school district, but also to pick up different ideas as well. And once again, the superintendent community is a small, tight-knit group of individuals, and we want to make sure that the best possible candidates are entering that field, and we want to make sure that you know, a school district like Community Consolidated School District 59 has the best candidate fit because whoever is chosen is going to have an impact on the students and staff for many, many years. And we take great pride in making sure that the placement is done correctly. And, and, and I, would, I would agree, my, you know, I have, my kids are all older, um, you know, three of them are out of the house. Um, so, and, and really to me, it's, it's the greatest form of professional development. Um, I, I don't use my vacation days uh, very often at all. Um, so what, what I choose to do um, when I do take vacation days is something like this. And it's, it's exciting for me. It's a great opportunity to meet other boards, to see how other boards interact, so I can bring back to my district. Um, you know, I, I am a superintendent. It's who I am. It's, 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 uh, I love what I do, um, and I love our profession. So uh, I can assure you um, we're transparent with our own districts about this, um, and we're also we're not going to slight either end of it. I promise you that. Well, your passion and your commitment come through from both of you. So thank you. And this is also really personal for me as well. I learned to read in District 59. <laughs> so my strengths as an individual and who I am as a leader um, were based on the foundational principles that um, were developed and were you know, basically taught to me by the wonderful teachers in District 59. So when I saw this search came, come up, I said, boy, this would be a great opportunity to continue to give back. But I have incredibly fond memories of my time in District 59. You got to submit a resume, Dr. Chung. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy with where I'm at. <laughs> that might be a conflict of interest. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Do you remember who was superintendent when you were a student here? <laughs> no, I don't remember who was superintendent, but um, Interestingly enough, I was awarded the University of Iowa Alumni Award and um, Ross Vittori and I started teaching together. So I know that Mrs. Stryka was my second grade teacher, but I was trying to figure out who my first grade teacher was. So I had contacted Ross. So we were doing a little investigating, but uh, just really fond memories. Um, I remember the multiplication tables and, you know, I was a multiplication champ at one point in my classroom. So just, you know, some really fond memories of District 59. Mr. Stryker ended up teaching at Grove Junior High School. Oh, how about that? <laughs> yep, I had his social studies book. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, no, I had lots of fond memories. And as I had mentioned, this would be a great way for me to continue to give back to District 59 and um, just continue to share you know, my knowledge, but also find the best candidate for the school district. So as, as you have seen, we, we've put together a, a skeleton of the draft timeline. Um, really, it, it can begin as soon as um, the board makes a decision and, uh, and hopefully, obviously, we would love it to be us. Um, and you know, if the board decides we want this done prior to the, the winter holidays, then we'll have that done prior to the winter holidays. We will, we will go through that process with you in our initial planning meeting and we will make sure we, we solidify and, and get that um, all agreed upon. Uh, in the very near future. And then last, Jake, one of final thoughts? Yeah, just some final thoughts. Um, School Exec Connect has a really phenomenal reputation and a strong track record of making sure that we find outstanding superintendents. Uh, we've never been sued. Um, we've never been refused payment. Um, we've, op we've operated um, successfully and uh, people have come to know us as a um, search firm that has conducted um, extremely successful searches. Uh, the composition of our consultant pool sets us apart from other competitors. Um, both Tim and I would be working exclusively on the um, school district search. 
Uh, we feel that we're both excellent superintendents and that we're also known as extremely outstanding and wonderful um, practitioners of the educational field. So we're able to connect and share general information and also highlight the great things that are happening within the district. Ongoing communication is really the key to our success. We'll ensure that you're informed throughout the process. Uh, we pride ourselves in being able to find a diverse pool of superintendent candidates, and we guarantee that we will find you the leader that will best fit your school community. And then we provide personalized and individualized attention to the board. Uh, we will go above and beyond to ensure that the board has a wonderful search experience and that we will make sure that we do this in a very comprehensive manner. So my final thought is it would be an honor to assist um, you as you hire your next superintendent and Tim, would, Tim and I would be extremely thankful in order to participate in that process. That's wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, we have a list of questions that we prepared to ask you. And then after that, if there's time, I'll open it up to general questions from the board. So uh, why don't we go through them? Patty, you're the first one. You're on, uh, you're, you're muted. Okay, what distinguishes you from your competitors? I, I think it is our, our track record. Um, I think if, if you were to look at other firms, uh, we, we've never had issues after a candidate's been placed that things were found out that they should have been vetted long before they, they came to the board. I also think that Jake and I are relationship driven. Um, you know, I think as we interact with, our, with the candidates, as we have that profile, we're representing your board prior to them coming to you. Um, they're gonna have a really professional, positive experience uh, we're gonna we're gonna brand you very well, much like we do our current districts that we serve. Um, we know that's very important, um, and it, we we've said it, and it's gonna be overkill. But we're we're currently in the trenches, and and we are we have a strong network of of other practic practitioners. Jake and I have already talked about candidates that we would seek out and tap on the shoulder to apply for this position, even prior to tonight. Great, thank you. All right, Randy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let my, my question is based on the answer. I'm gonna let Mardell take her question. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Mardell. Uh, Mardell, you're muted. Okay. With every search, you obviously have some that go very, very well, and some where you have problems. So, what was one of the best things that you've seen in your searches, and what is something that did not go well that you have to change? You know, I'll share out one of the positives to start with Tim. Um, in a search that I had participated within a uh, school district that was close by yours, uh, we had an opportunity to take a look at our constituent base. And uh, we had a, a strong opportunity to work with the district personnel to advertise our uh, evening of uh, when we were able to meet with our parents to get some feedback. And that process, when we worked with our uh, marginalized parents, really became an opportunity for us to branch out and create an opportunity for those particular stakeholders to have a strong voice. So we actually instituted busing service. We picked them up at their apartment complexes. We had translators available. And the opportunity to share out that information was so successful that we had more minority parents that had come to that evening than we did with our typical gen ed parents. So it was a real success for us in terms of getting um, some additional parents and their thoughts and their perspectives that may not have typically participated in a general overview session. I love that. I think that is so important. I think one of the things that I was disappointed in, we, we, I did a, a, a search, um, one of the ones I referenced earlier, and it was for an assistant superintendent position as well. Um, in some of the, the community turnout to the open forum um, didn't, wasn't as successful as we had hoped. Now we had great, we had great survey responses. Um, we had really good feedback from the focus groups. Um, but I, you know, and as, I, as we look back, I think when we worked with the board in the very beginning and the, um, the administrative team, we probably could have identified 
some better dates um, that didn't conflict with events that were going on. Um, again, it wasn't necessarily a decision that school exec connect, but I think if I were to do it over, I would go back and I would have pushed a little bit harder to reschedule or to, to add another date on the calendar. Um, so something I learned that I would always consider now moving forward with a, with a board. I think that's good to hear because when we did this the last time, and I've only been through one superintendent search, unlike Mardell, who's already been through four, um, <laughs> we didn't have much of a turnout at all uh, with School Is That Connects uh, forums or focus groups last time. And so I definitely would want to double down on making sure we got people to come out. So I'm glad you're sensitive to that concern and I hope you would be able to work with us to make sure we get the people we need to hear from. Yeah, I think some of those ideas Jake had earlier too would be very advantageous to do that. I agree. I think, you know, you've got to get them where they are and find a way to bring them to you. Okay. Uh, Courtney asked her question, Chris. Well, thank you, Janice. Uh, thanks, folks. I my question's been answered throughout your presentation. I appreciate it. Okay, um, Robert, did you have anything additional to ask about diversity? Uh, no. You know, I think it was addressed uh, perfectly during the during the presentation. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Patty, do you want to ask the next one? I'm interested in the answer to that. Are you still muted? I don't yep, see you. I was muted. Okay. Um, what are your sources for the search and what areas uh, do most of your candidates come from? Well, like the first, the second part of that, um, you know, typically we'll probably get probably 85% are gonna be from in-state. Um, you know, we're, we're gonna get some candidates who aren't qualified, but they're more non-traditional candidates. They may work in the corporate world um, from an interview, from a application process. Um, and then typically we'll probably get, be, you know, three, six, maybe three um, out of state candidates for this. And again, part of it's going to be dependent upon the advertising that the board uh, decides to go with related to um, whether it's local, national, whether we put something in Ed Week um, magazine or we put something. We, we go through AASA. Um, so, you know, those are the sources. When we talk about uh, AASA, when we talk about IASA, um, all of our networking that we do with our consultants across the country, uh, the email blast to superintendents across the country who are sitting superintendents, um, the two partnerships with our minority organizations, um, we'll, we'll be uh, working with, with those individuals on. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, the, the vast majority are going to be in-state candidates who are familiar with, um, but we are going to get a handful that are going to be interested coming from somewhere else. Do you say, do you think that they're mostly regional, you know, or that they're going to come from the suburban area, or do you think that there are superintendents from outside I, of that area think, that will apply? I think you have a destination district, and I, I think... Um, you'll have superintendents from across the state applying. Okay, interesting. I think you'll also have superintendents from other states and other regional areas applying as well. As Tim had mentioned, this district is known nationally, and there are going to be a lot of people, whether they're on the East Coast or West Coast, trying to figure out whether or not they want to move to the Chicagoland area. Um, it's a very, very well-known district, and um, as I had mentioned earlier, based on the programs that are offered, uh, it's going to attract a lot of different candidates that are interested in working with a diverse group of constituents. I mean, um, really an opportunity to succeed in a variety of ways. So um, we know that Elk Grove, um, along with its uh, other additional suburban area or um, other areas, um, has a strong tax base as well. And that is going to attract individuals knowing that um, there are going to be opportunities to continue to lead this district in a very progressive manner. So it's going to attract lots of people. Well, that's good to know because we are a great district and I know that Art has done a great job in getting our visibility raised 
uh, nationally and regionally. So I think that's good to hear. Um, yeah. Yeah. I jump in with another question. You can cut me off after this and I won't interrupt anymore with questions. <laughs> um, but I was just curious on your perspective as sitting superintendents experiencing the unprecedented year that is 2020. And if you think that's an impediment to getting top qualified candidates for our search, because I'm wondering, you know, we, I'm of the opinion that we want someone with superintendency experience, but I'm simultaneously a little concerned about someone who would jump ship in the middle of a very unique and challenging year. You know, I, I think, yes, it does present some unique challenges, but I also think in the, the at least the head of me as a superintendent, uh, I, am, I am optimistic that by this time next year, we may be in a different place as hopefully as a, as a world or country, as a region. Um, if you were to ask, and I, I've talked to other districts back in the spring, they asked that same question because um, they were looking in March or April to fill for this year. And I would have asked that much differently and say, absolutely, Courtney, you're 100% correct. But I think superintendents are one, I think they're, they're realizing we're gonna be in a different place. And two, I think they see the landscape of education changing based upon what's been, what, what we've been asked to do and what the future could look like. So they're, I think they're gonna be willing to go to another district um, and either continue the excellent things they're doing to be part of the, the, the new, whatever that new looks like or the changes that the new district, their, their new district is, is implementing. Um, so I think it's gonna be a little bit challenging, but I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna stop people from pursuing this job. And I think openings like this don't come up very often. Um, I think Tim would concur with that. And when you take a look at the branding that's been done or even the general information on your web pages, or if people are doing their homework, they're going to realize that this is a destination district and school districts like this don't come up very often. So they're going to be thinking about, you know, should we look to apply? And I think the majority of individuals would say yes, because this really could be a once in a life opportunity to work in a school district of this magnitude. Could you tell me what local districts you have um, serviced and put in new superintendents recently in the last few years? Um, Lake Zurich. LaGrange. Lake Park. Those are the three that come to mind immediately. Are they elementary or high school or are they combined? LaGrange was an elementary. And Lake Zurich uh, is a unit and then Lake Park was a high school. Thank you. A little bit of blend of both. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Um, I would like to get those um, some contacts for reference checks uh, from you for those districts. Um, that would be very helpful to me. I have a question that we skipped over and I guess I'm wondering given how much districts have changed and you've said that we are progressive, one of my concerns is that we make sure we find someone who can understand where we've been, where we can want to continue to go, but can also um, you know, implement some of the things that haven't yet been implemented. And so I guess, you know, we talk about 21st century teaching and learning. One of you talked about the workshop model. We use that. Um, we're looking at a lot of things that are um, both foundational, but problem-based as well, like especially in math. Do you have any thoughts about how many candidates or if that's something that's gonna be hard to find at this juncture? Uh, people that have shifted to that kind of progressive outlook? Well, I think that's where the match has to come into play. As we, as we speak to all the stakeholder groups, as we create that pro profile, you know, that's going to come out very clearly and what, what you're looking for in the, this next individual, this next leader, and what the immediate priorities are going to be and should be. And ultimately then obviously as the board, you know, you have a, a fairly new strategic plan in place and ultimately the board then is gonna establish the goals for that superintendent for the first year and, and beyond. Um, and regardless of whether they're a sitting superintendent 
um, or brand new to their role, um, you know, they're not anyone who's going to come in and just try and bulldoze a new initiative or 21st century learning or whatever those things are prior to building relationships and listening and, and working with all of you is on a, is going to be on a fast track to, you know, to failure. Um, so I think it's going to be so important on the front end to establish what those things are and the priorities, uh, what the expectations are, and really what are those greatest areas of need when they, they come in and they, they are seated in, in the beginning of July next year. Um, and that's part of our job too, as we vet and we talk to candidates and we answer questions, um, we need to make sure that, you know, that mentality is, is not the people we're gonna bring forward to all of you. You're gonna tell us the kind of candidate you want. Uh, okay. And our job is to make sure that we bring a slate knowing that they're all gonna be a little bit different, um, but that's, that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be able to play both ends of that with the relationship building, but also knowing that you need to move forward. You need to continue on progressing, but but not at a rate that you guys can't sustain. You know, we know there's some other things related to curriculum. We know there's things with trust and co you know cohesiveness and collaboration that has to be fulfilled in your district in order for anything to be successful. Uh, and that's true for any successful district. Correct. Um, so, so that's gonna be paramount to whoever takes this role to be able to do that as a foundational skill. As long as you understand what that is or that you have the background. I mean, a lot of, you know, superintendents are not progressive. They have districts that are going well, so they don't need to be. They have high test scores because they don't have a lot of diversity or low income, you know. So as long as you guys understand what we're talking about, if we select you such that you could then find the person we would be seeking. Yes, and I can, from, from myself, I consider myself a very progressive superintendent, but who's grounded in relationships. And I'm in a district that we've, we've achieved results, better results every year, but we're not where we need to be. We still have achievement gaps and we still have pockets of kids. Um, but so I, I, I pride myself on balancing all of that very well. Good, so you know what the kind of person we're looking like, and are you available? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're not done with where you are anyway, so. Okay, uh, where are we on questions? I think uh, you've answered most of what I have down. I'd like to open it up to uh, the board members to see if they have any additional questions. Has anybody who has not yet asked a question would like to ask one? I have a quick question, guys. The um, the the background checks and the reference checks on the superintendent or on like the the final candidates is that done by the board? Is that done or is that done by School Exec Connect? We we encourage the board to make some reference calls on on you know to individuals that have not been talked to yet. So of every board member, if we select two, then we're going to have a, fourteen additional calls. And we can certainly help target those individuals in the district. Um, and then the there's one, the, the more thorough background check, I think that's a $750 expense. Mm -hmm. We would encourage the board and the district to conduct that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to get in to make sure that all of their transcripts and their work experience and, and all of that is vetted, as Jake talked about, any criminal background. Um, I have served at a, in a, in a a fairly recent um, search where that background check did find something a little bit more, but it was so far in the past, the board and the superintendent, and, and it was it was a mood point. Sure. But it was information that the board needed to be aware of um, before they made a decision. Are you looking at background checks that are within state? Because I know that there are differences and. The, some of the organizations that conduct these where they're looking at just in-state versus nationally. And so if a candidate has lived someplace else or has worked someplace else outside the state, we wouldn't necessarily pick that up. So we will do, as a former HR person, we will do both a local and national background check to ensure that there are no skeletons in the closet so that the board is not embarrassed by the final choice. So we will ensure that there is a thorough background check that has taken place. Okay, and then with whatever we could choose, um, 
however we choose to do it in house, we can address that ourselves then as to whether it's not it's national or more more uh, specific to the state. Correct. Okay. Do we have any uh, other questions, board members? I just want to re uh, repeat my thoughts on what was important to me in the four, the other, the previous three, and now this one in the way of superintendent search. And to me, we, it, when it got right down to the end, it was extremely important that we went to the site, we talked with principals, union people, PTOs, whoever, to get information and to see how the candidate actually worked with the other people in his buildings and in his district. And then we also had a, a dinner and, and a meeting and so forth with the final candidate to see how he reacted. Do you approve of those? Yes, I, it might be done a little differently based on the COVID situation currently. Um, but yes, I would concur with that. Okay, I, I had, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mardell, you had another one, right? That's all, that's fine. Okay, because I had three, I forgot to ask. Um, with the two rounds of interviews, is that done with the whole board? Or I know somewhere you listed an interview committee. So what does that look like for the first interview as opposed to the second? So when we, when we yes, the, the interviews are done with the board. So when we, when, we, okay. when we bring the slate of five to seven, you figure out these are the ones you want to interview, it'll be with the, the entire board. Okay. Yep, and then the second round as well. Now, for the second round, um, some boards have broken it up um, where, but it, you, know, you know, they might, for part of the night, they'll be with two of them, and the other part of the night, they'll be with three of them, and um, just based upon schedule. Um, but it's, it's very rare for that to happen. Um, but yeah. At least yeah. with all of you. Well, this board has uh, five members who have a year or less experience. So it's very important to make sure that they're all there and they get to see this and experience it and provide their perspective as parents, as community members. Um, so I think it's gonna be really great. Um, do you meet with, uh, when you get board information, um, you know, you're asking individual board members what they want in a superintendent. Are you doing that individually or as a group? We usually do it as a group. There have been times based upon schedules of board members where we would do it then, we'd meet up with a board member either virtually or face-to-face -to, -face to go over that if the schedule didn't allow. I just wanna make sure that board members feel that they can, I think they can speak their mind, whether you know everyone agrees with them or not. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody is able to provide you with the feedback they want you to have. Okay. Um, and you'll help us with the contract, I presume. I think you already mentioned that. And so you'll determine with us what you already said, what the uh, comparables will be. And then we will, we will, we will provide comparables. Yeah. Uh, and we will ultimately, you'll work with your district then legal counsel. Um, you know, once we get to a, a closing time frame and you feel you have a, a candidate in place or getting ready to have one, then yeah. we'll get that to your HR person and to your legal counsel and, and you'll have the comparables then to review and to say, does this seem like a fair compensation package? Okay, that sounds good. Of course, Ross Vittori will be in on that. Yes. He's, he's in that role here. Yes. So, uh. We'll, we'll be running across each other again. Um, okay, do we have other questions from board members? Just a very quick re repeat, if you've already told me this, then I didn't get it all. How do you approach the community? Online, surveys, wh what? What are your ways to approach the community? So that's a real interesting question. So typically we can do it online um, we can send out general surveys, but what we've also found is by working with school district staff members to make sure that we have a process that's at the ground level. So for instance, if we want to increase our um, bilingual population in terms of their representation for gathering information, we found that it's very successful to work with our bilingual staff to make sure that we're 
sharing out information that they could help publicize for us. So that's been one of the pieces that we've utilized in the past to ensure that we've got a broader representation of information going out, but we can do it in a variety of different ways based on the resources that the district can provide us. How many focus groups would you be running? Do you run more than one or, you know, would it be, uh, and are they mixed? You do everybody together, like um, parents, community members, um, so, you know, staff? Typically the focus groups would be probably an hour in length and we would typically break it up by stakeholder group. Okay. So maybe your administrative team, the building administrative teams together, you know, your district office teams, to, you know, and another one, or they could be combined. And then our parents are, are one group, maybe business leaders, fire and um, police chief are another one. So it just, you know, there could be anywhere between four to six or seven of them. Okay. Um, and then the, the open forums are typically in after at the end of the day or in the evening where when it's convenient for people to be off of work and, and such. Again, that'll be something we'll talk to you and to find out which which are, are the stakeholder groups that we wanna make sure that we've, we've right. communicated with. Um, and then we'll, what I did mention earlier, we will, once those have been identified, we will provide you form letters that you can use then to send invitations out, to post on the website. So you'll all have all that information, whoever the district liaison is that we'll work with to get those communications um, out to the individuals. And she's on this call. I figured. Cindy Pullen, yeah, she's our- She's been wonderful so far. Jack, Jack uh, yeah, she's our Jack of all trades or <laughs> Jacqueline of all trades. Um, any other questions? Well, seeing none, uh, we were right at 9.04 p.m. And I wanna thank you for your time. It's been very enjoyable. Um, and we will then be taking a look at our options and we will definitely get back to you with a final decision. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time as well. I know it's a long night for, for all of you. Um, we, we appreciate it. And regardless of what your final decision is, we wish you guys the greatest of luck. And um, I know you're gonna attract a fantastic group of, of candidates and a final, final leader for, for next year. So stay well and stay healthy, everybody. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Nice, nice talking with you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Hey, Ben, are you? Uh... Oh, it looks like they've dropped off already. I think they've zoomed before. Yeah, I think <laughs> they have. Yeah. Okay, so we are now at the point where we can hold a discussion and open session about the pros and cons of the firms when we get into discussions of individuals who have presented to this tonight today we can talk about them in open session but we can also go into closed so we need to be respectful and considerate i think they were all great so you know we have some some opportunity then to go into closed so let's Let's have a conversation now about the firms and what your thinking is about the people that we've talked to. But can I just clarify, what can we discuss in open versus what we can't? We can discuss the firms, but we can't discuss the individuals that we spoke to tonight? Well, we can. We can discuss them in open. Um, mm -hmm. But because it's a personnel-like decision, yeah. we are able to discuss that in closed, um, but we cannot discuss the firms themselves in closed. There was a recent change to OMA in last year, at the end of last year, that took um, independent contractors and added them to what could be discussed in closed or not. And they said that they cannot be discussed as far as a firm, but they can be discussed as far as individuals and closed. Well, why don't we start, start with these two and, and talk about the firm as and how we feel. Yes. So have at it. What are your, what are your thoughts so far? My, one of my biggest concerns is um, 
if you if you're doing if you're a superintendent and this is it i feel like i know they said they're workaholics but it feels like a side job it is a side job so to me i want 100 percent of their attention okay i'll ask this i'll say this i'll say this though patty um the other um bwp they could be dealt, they could be doing multiple search for multiple districts. So we wouldn't have a hundred percent of time either though. Where I'm assuming with SEC, we would be the only their only client that they would be working on as our superintendent. And that's probably a question we should have asked to confirm that, but I'll yeah, ask them. Ask that as a follow-up. That's important. Right. That is important, I think. And I, I agree with you, first ladies who spoke about this. On the other hand, they seem to be so very well verse on everything and so into what they're doing that I, I agree with Randy if, if we're one or only a couple districts they're working on, I'm sure we'd get plenty of, of their attention. Okay. Uh, I asked about the, the districts that they have already placed in and I do think it's important that we do check with some of the other districts because they are different districts for both firms and see how board members and or superintendents, whoever we can talk to, uh, if they have some comments for us, that would be helpful. I will get those reference lists and I will start calling them like right away yes. to make sure that everything is fine. Mm -hmm. um, these are two of the top firms in the industry. So, you know, hopefully we won't uncover anything negative, uh, but it's definitely up to us to do our due diligence in that area. We can't just make the assumption. So I feel like either firm, I felt fairly confident would do a good job. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if either one we went with, the candidate pool would be fairly similar. Yeah. Um, they're tapped into the same set of networks. They said the same associations. Um, I did appreciate that School Exec Connect did current homework. They knew about the strategic plan. They, you know, made reference to, and, and, you know, personal experience, but made reference to Oasis Mobile Home Park. They just personalized it in a way that made me feel confident that they are going to work hard to understand our district. Um, I, feel good about the fact that BWP, we had an interim superintendency, but I'm also wondering how relevant that knowledge is given how much we've changed in the last seven years. I would agree. I and, agree too. And it worries me a little that there's, there wasn't any acknowledgement of that. Like yeah. there wasn't any acknowledgement of, but I know, you know, we've gone this progressive direction and obviously we could educate on that, but an assumption concerns me on that end that the knowledge wouldn't be current. Mm -hmm. right. and, 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 and that's something I thought about too, Courtney. And, and I, and I was thinking on the other side of the coin, ultimately they have a network of associates that are actually doing the work. You know, yeah. the folks we spoke to today, well, for, for the first firm are they're they're the, the faces that are going to be here and try to close the deal and do the sales pitch. Um, you know, so I was just thinking, okay, we're going to give them the specs of what we want as far as what we're looking for, and they will go out and cast the wide net. And we just want to make sure that they have the ability to cast that net wide enough. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I looked at was the fees. I think the fees are basically identical. Um, when you do the math, one was a little lower as far as consulting fees, but had more expenses. The other one was higher with less expenses, but ultimately they came out right about I think a $250 difference. It was very, right, right. there wasn't much difference as far as fees go. But I, I, I do have the concern with, with their day jobs. You know, it, it, it's good that they are both active superintendents, but one comment that they made early in the morning or late in the evening was I think the quote that they said. And is, is that when we're going to get the, the responses to our emails? Because they're busy during the day. Our superintendent's very busy during the day. Um, and it's a busy time. And a lot of our questions were about how does COVID impact the search? And, you know, is that going to impact the candidate pool that we have? 
um because they're busy and they're going to be busy as well so that was just the only the only con i had uh, on my list here yeah i'm not concerned about that i think that um you know we'll find out from checking their references right. whether or not they've been able to do their the heavy lifting i mean it's a little bit of a reservation but i don't think it's a huge one for me yeah did and just just to confirm they 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 found dr fessler for us is that what i heard yeah, that yeah. company did, but it wasn't mm -hmm. these two. They're okay. people who are still with the firm, but they are, mm -hmm. you know, have been long retired and they're in different roles mm -hmm. right now. The one thing I did like from the second presentation was the having the candidates do the presentation, which wasn't part of the, you know, having them do a live mm -hmm. uh, presentation for us, which I thought would be very, very uh, beneficial. Now, keep in mind that um, if we asked um, BWP and associates, they would, I'm sure, be right. willing to set that up for us. So we have the flexibility of, of, you know, making sure that would happen in either case. Would you reiterate exactly what we're going to be sure of? I, I didn't, I missed that, Robert. Um, the, the, the second firm was talking about having the candidates come in and do a, a live presentation. We would give them a topic. And that would let us see kind of how they do their homework and how they how they present information. Uh -huh. that's, that's good. I personally preferred um, School Exec Connect from the standpoint of them uh, providing more specific details about what they would be doing for us and with us. Um, and I thought there was more specificity that was spelled out uh, by them. Yeah, I think on the flip side, I did feel that BWP, um, one just difference in the services they offer, I suppose, is that contractual piece, which it really sounds like School Exec Connect is a handoff for the contractual piece. And then the mentoring, which follows, which I'd be interested to know when we do the reference checks, like, is that valuable? Because I feel like for a lot of school districts, maybe that becomes an afterthought and they don't tap it. So it's not yeah. worthwhile anyway. Personally, I don't think we need their help after we finally made our choice. I think once we've made our choice, it's our job to keep track of what's going on and so forth, not have somebody come in and mentor us. Well, yeah, I don't know how much value it has, but I also think that it's a nice mm -hmm. to have um, in the case that you might actually want to exercise it. One one of the things I did like, one of the questions I had in my head before we started was wanting to know how many women have been placed in, in superintendent roles or how many minorities have been placed. And BWP did have that information offhand. I think it was they did 27 searches and 16 went to women and minorities. They had all the, the facts and percentages um, for that, which I thought was very helpful mm -hmm. um, just to see what that diverse candidate pool could look like and if they have a history of doing it. Yeah. Well, School Exec Connect also said that seven out of nine were mm -hmm. women or minorities. So I think both of them are sensitive to that. Um, and I think they would find candidates that would fill the bill. I thought it was interesting that both of them mentioned a relationship with the uh, Latino group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they uh, BWP said it was exclusive, but it sounds like maybe it isn't, or maybe there's at least some other kind of relationship with them. Can we follow up about that? Yeah. Thanks. I'd like to know it, when we follow up, how many have been placed from that group? I think it's very simple to talk about, oh yeah, we have relationships with this organization, but we've placed zero, you know? So right. I think that that factors. I, I would it. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Can we ask that for both groups? Yep. Thanks. And I think I might even call them and ask them what their experiences <laughs> are. And so, you know, get the full the 360 on that. Mm -hmm. I like However, that. If they haven't, placed as many as you would have had hoped. You've got to remember, we had a choice between a man and a woman at one of the searches that we've done in the past. And 
after we went out to the districts, there was no question about it. The woman didn't, didn't measure up. So it wasn't that we didn't have a woman as one of our two finalists, but she didn't make the, make the grade. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't need to discuss the extra. Uh, um, anyway, what else are you thinking about? Randy, what are, what are your thoughts, Randy? Your, yeah. Well, my thoughts are basically, we're picking the people, not the fur. Right. You know, so it's, you know. I agree. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 will, I, will, I, will, I will say this. Um, it does seem like BWP has a little more back, back room support for their ex associates, which could be beneficial. Um, I th I mirror what Courtney said is that um, you know either one would be fine with us being a you know as as um, you know SEC pointed out you know we, people are a lot of people are going to be considered for this position so it won't be hard for them to find candidates it'll be hard for them to you know work through it so I mean it's for me it comes down to who we're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with either firm because I think they both have the knowledge and the experience. It comes down to who are we comfortable with as um, individuals, and that's something we can't discuss here. So that's where that's where my thought is at. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we, could, we could discuss it here, but it's not as polite as discussing it in private. Chris, we haven't heard from you. You've been awful quiet. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Um, you know, Courtney, Courtney um, said what I, I had in my mind eloquently. Um, I would summarize this. The um, SEC or uh, the Exec Connect crew, they're, uh, as they said, they work in the trenches. They've got a great ground game. They showed up prepared. Whether they have a lot of staff or not, they knew our district down to the T. And they were uh, well rehearsed, well practiced, and presented very well. Whereas the earlier group, they're they were pleasant. They were nice. Um, they're not in the trenches. They're removed from the trenches and they uh, banked on um, a nice feeling conversation, which is also great. It goes back to test. Uh, it goes back to relationship. Um, if I had to pick today, right now, I would pick the latter um, because they're in the trenches and they presented well and they connected back to um, state. They talked about our district and our kids and our and educational outcomes. Um, and, and those are all important to me. So I also think that uh, Jake in particular really got and really understood how important it is to give voice to all our children, especially the ones who are disenfranchised, you know, and hardest to reach. And I really, I thought he really resonated with me on that point. As well as their parents, when he gave the example about the successful search where they were able to get a strong presence from an underrepresented group. So that impressed me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him a lot of credit. I think he spoke very well about our district in a way of, you know, just kind of the, the enthusiasm he had in it when he described it, um, which I think could be a benefit when he's talking to candidates who may be on the fringe of maybe not wanting to apply for a position because of the climate or the current situation of kind of persuading them to take a chance. Yeah, I agree. I'm extremely <laughs> impressed with Jake. Very impressed with him. I think we all were. I mean, just to be frank, he's the kind of person I would like to see us get as a superintendent. Right. And that gives me confidence that if he taps the shoulder of a friend, they're more likely to be similar to him. Or that he'll at least really deeply understand what we need. Mm -hmm. That's what I liked about them last time. They ended up uh, bringing, of course, it was two different people, but they ended up bringing us people uh, with a high level of understanding, even beyond what we thought we need, we needed. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see that, that they understand even better than we do what we need. And they'll give us people to look at who really can move the district forward. I was a little bit uncomfortable with the people who we had from at um, school exec last time. But, I know you were. But I, I, I wasn't real pleased with them. But these two tonight seem to be a different caliber of people. The question well, I have, Janice, maybe you can answer this. On BWP, 
are Mark and Anne, the two who we will be working with? Yes. Or, or all these other people on this list have nothing to do with us then? Well, I mean, they do have, they both firms have people in the background that are doing administrative right. work who are collecting data and so on. And so, but these are the people that are the face of the firm for us. Okay. So, can I, yeah. Can I, can I add this? Um, it sounds like we're starting to go into discussion about the individuals as compared to the firms now. Are there any more discussions we want to talk about with the firms or are we, I think know, the firms or we want to start talking about the, you know, kind of going to closed session and get this kind of moving and actually get out at a decent hour tonight? Well, can we go into closed session? That was direct, Grant. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I mean, well, Eddie, just in case we didn't understand what you want to do here. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there, this is the highlight of my week, Randy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, do we Wait, have, there's one coming up. Do we have any other questions about the firms themselves or in general about what we heard? They seem very similar. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, yeah, I think either firm would do a very good job for us. I think they have slightly different skill sets. So why don't we have a motion to go into closed session and please read the statement. Uh, I, it, I guess I'll do it because I've got it right in front of my face. Okay. Um, it resolved that on the first day of September 2020, the Community Consolidated School District 59 Board of Education recess in a closed meeting for discussion of the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district. Uh, so motion is made by No, me. no, no, there's plenty wait. more. Wait, where is it? It's right on the screen. Oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not looking at the screen. I was looking at the paper I had. Um, I gotta get rid of you guys. You want me to read it? Um, hang on, educational study. Yeah, go ahead, Mardell, go ahead. I move we go into closed session for the discussion of the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, specific individuals who serve as independent contractors in a park, recreational, or educational setting, or specific volunteers of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee, a specific individual who serves as an independent contractor in a park recreational or, or educational setting or a volunteer of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. All right, do we have a second? I guess I'll be the second then. All right, so roll call please. Um, Darlovich. Aye. Lang. Aye. Mancia. Aye. Shelly, aye. Reed? Aye. Schumacher? Aye. And Krinsky? Aye. And the motion passes. All right. So we will come back. Thank you very much. Um, could you please open the action item? Thank you, Ben. Thank mm -hmm. you, Ben. Ben is our wizard. Well, uh, too much credit. I'm not cool oh, enough no, to no. be wizard. I'm not cool no. to be a wizard. I'm like, that's yeah, that's just roll right. with it, man. Okay, all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Now you're popular. Hey, no, I mean, run, ben. One of them talked to you, said the brand, and I'm like, well, that's Ben wow. doing all that branding work. Oh my gosh. Okay. Effort. Okay. I have one thing to add in, in open session, by the way. Okay. So I also have gonna, one thing to add afterwards, too. Okay. That we're gonna change this um to read. Be it resolved on the first day of September 2020, the Community Consolidated School Board, School District 59 Board of Education employs School Exec Connect to serve as the consulting firm to assist the Board of Education with the superintendent search process pending acceptable contract and what? References check. Pending, pending uh, answers to certain questions or something like that. Um, Pending ben, acceptable ben, contract references, references, acceptable references and questions. And follow up questionnaire. That's good. 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 And so now what does it say? <laughs> so I can maybe make the motion. 
Okay. Go ahead. Be it resolved that on the first day of September 2020, the Community Consolidated School District 59 Board of Education employs School Exec Connect to serve as a consulting firm to assist the Board of Education with the superintendent search process pending acceptable contract, acceptable reference check, and acceptable responses to follow-up questionnaire. I second okay. that. Okay. Hang on one second. Responses to questionnaire. All right, who's seconding? Robert. Thank you, Thank Robert. God we have attorneys on our board. Oh. All right. <laughs> Then at least I feel like we know we're doing what we should be doing. So okay, that's great. Okay. So roll call, please. Robert. Aye. Me. Aye. Randy. Aye. Mardell. Aye. Janice. Aye. Chris. Aye. No aye aye. No aye aye. <laughs> and aye. Courtney. Aye aye. <laughs> Thank you. And the motion passes. With eight votes. <laughs> That's so yeah, weird. A lot of singing references. Chris, that's so weird about you saying aye aye, Captain, because I've done it before in board meetings. It's what always makes me think of. So we are on the same page with that. Okay. So um, you had another item, Mardell? I just want to say we had a very long but successful finance meeting and facilities and um, maintenance meeting. It went from 3 30 to quarter, quarter after six, but out of wow. the. I think we came up with some really good discussion, don't you, Randy? Yep. And <laughs> going through my stuff, I found a paper with all of the schools and all of the additions and when they were put on and how many were put on and so forth, which obviously is going to the materials and to Al Tijerna and to Ron. But I asked um, Denise Bishop to put it on a scan and send it out uh, on the uh, online to all of you rather than give it to you in paper because I know you would prefer it in online and I think you will find it very interesting to see when and how many um, additions we put on all of the schools and when they were built and so forth so interesting. That. so that's that's just from my archives yeah you guys we put on a lot of additions over the years we sure okay. did did you want to add anything to that Randy so um Kind of, kind of. We had we had two different meetings. We had we have facilities or a finance meeting from three thirty to four thirty, and from four thirty to five thirty is the facilities committee. Um, so we are talking in the finance committee meeting about uh, the secure entrances at uh, the three schools that would be Juliet Low, Claremont, and um, Brentwood. Mm -hmm. um, we've and as you recall last board meeting we sent we kind of sent out for you know kind of we sent out the proposal for our the RP but basically this is to get um the pricing from Nicholas Nicholas um based on the existing plans from Nicholas um the cost of the, they estimate the cost to do these three renovations at 4.2 million dollars Ouch. Isn't that more than we thought it was going to be? We yep. were probably, we were probably right on 2.7. Now associated with that, there are some costs in there that um, would need to be added to make things look right and stuff like that. And that would get it up to over 4.3 to 4.4 million dollars. Ouch. Um, now the funny thing is and this is more from our facilities discussion because they, they, all, they all blend into one. Um, CTS looked at the proposal and stuff like that and they, they said they can do it for about 3.3 million. They can save us okay. 900, they can save us $900,000. Wow, yes. and we've been really happy with them. It sounds like they're doing a bang up job for us and saving us which, a lot which, of money. Yes. Which yes, but it still kind of goes to the fact that we were planning two point seven million dollars. Yeah. Now we're talking four point three. Now, you know, CTS is going to um, consider to do it for three point three, and this would be a not the, exactly the whole not to exceed. 
Um, what my concern related to this is, and you know, I think Robert was part of the discussion as well, and Mardell was there, was that if we do proceed with CTS, this will be a we won't be going out to bid. It'll be part of our existing contract with them, and I have some concerns with that from a perspective of this is really not part of our original contract with CTS being, um, you know, the original contract almost for, you know, for roofing, for HVAC, for asphalt. But it was not part of, you know, this reconstruction is done, you know, remodeled work was not part of that discussion. Yeah. Okay. So your problem with it is that we haven't approved it separately? We haven't approved it separately. Um, you know, this is something that normally goes out for bid and stuff like that. So there's, so Art, Art, and Ron, Art and Ron are going to be talking to the legal about what we can and cannot do. Okay. I mean, one thing, one, one, one question that we ask is, well, can we go out to bid and then reject their bids and then still accept a CTS bid? And what was pointed out then is if electrician bids on our original bid, would that be something that they have to, we have to accept when C, if we decide to award the contract to CTS? There's a, there's a, there's a bunch of working, yeah. Working, working parts to it. So I think we're waiting. We're going to wait to hear from legal for some more clarification on that. Yeah, and I, and I and just a really quick add on that. The concerns I had were, were, you know, it's 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 everything. Everything over twenty thousand dollars should go out to bid. You know, we didn't have the underlying scope for this work and CTS, which has done a great job, but they're on the call saying, "All right, we can do it. We can do it for this amount," and we just don't know. You know, we could bid it out and it could come way below 3.3 million. We have no idea, you know, but it's just, it, it seemed like a, like a loophole to just amend the contract with CTS to add another 3.3 on top of it without actually seeing if it would be the lowest bid out there. It might also, even if it is, it might also not look transparent because right. it would be. Yeah. And so, then, um, yeah. so that's one thing I want to bring up. Then the other thing is, we, you guys remember that discussion about Univents that we were talking about yes. that were changing at two schools? Right. I, think we were, I think it was Forest View and what was the other one? I, Devonshire. I think it was Devonshire. Well, Grove. Grove, I well think. we also have two schools that would not be getting the Univents um, that were not part of the original, the phase two of the construction. Um, we did ask um, CTS to provide us some information on that. And what they have said is that they can do these unit events for $1.1 million in our last two schools. Those would be um, Grove Junior High and Brentwood, which the really good thing about these unit events is they would really improve the air quality of the, within the classroom. Right. And as of now, Grove and Brentwood Grove is our most, our most popular, our densely populated junior high, and Brentwood is our also most densely populated elementary school. So there'd be a significant benefit for those to be done. Um, and benefit the, it would be done now while they're working at those schools. And, that, and this work would be done next summer. And the, the reasoning for, supposedly they said if we wait till in two years, the price is going to be one point nine million dollars. Well, why so. can't they do it this year? Well, that's well, that but that's a discussion. That's going to be something that is not in the budget that we approved and discussed. So it'd be a change to the budget. Now it'd be you know if we're already looking at like you know like a four hundred thousand dollar surplus, that could theoretically impact us for a deficit. Now we could push it till next fiscal year. We pay the they can do the work in the summer, but we pay for it in you know, in July, which would push into the fiscal right. year 2020, 21-22. Well, do it at all and not put in the unit events. Yeah, right? but, but this is during a pandemic. And so I'm you just, well, just see me, what the different choices are. But the thing, the thing about it right now is if we do it next summer, they're already in, they're, they're already in the schools doing work in HVAC and other stuff. So there would not be additional costs for a project manager for the work because they already have tradesmen in the work doing their so these would be basically the cost of getting the unit and installing them. There'll be no additional costs associated with it. So we get a significant cost break doing it. Um, the other thing is these unit events are due to be replaced in the next two to three years, four years. 
So is that something that we want to consider? And that's come, that's going to have to come up in the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, as part of that um, discussion, if we decide to put this, hey, we'll put it, we'll do it next summer, but we want to pay for it in 21, 22, we have a very large um, technology refresh coming up next year. It's up to the tune of three, two point five to three million dollars. So our current budget for next, for not this year, but for next year, is already showing the numbers in the red. So what's what potentially could happen is we would show a deficit this year, and potentially a deficit next year, with these, especially with the um, secured entrances and with um, the technology upgrade and with the, or tech, they call it technology refresh. Yeah. And the um, potential additional unit events, because that would be coming out of our existing funds because we have already spent the entire um, HLS bond issuance already. Okay. So, so, when, can, so this, I'm, just, I'm just presenting this. This is something that's going to come up for discussion in, in, two, in a week and a half. Can I ask you, Randy, what the... at uh, MERV 13 or they MERV 10 or what's the deal? Um, I didn't hear it, but I think you're look, more looking at the filters and stuff like that. Right, that's what I mean. What What's the filter level of like the, the ones they put on the roofs of all our buildings are MERV 13, right. which will take care of any particulates that can cause coronavirus. Yeah, COVID nineteen. So, and there was a question about what the univents would be rated at. I do not know that. Um, what the univents do, though, is they pull air from outside. Mm -hmm. They pull they they pull the room air from the inside and push it outside and bring in fresh air from the outside, without going through the HVAC system. So I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of filters they have on those. Okay, I'm, I want to know that though, if that's the work yeah. that they're going to be doing. Let's so that would be a question. Okay, but there will be a question. I think, I think I think that's a question we bring up in an open discussion, an open in the meeting when we're discussing this stuff. I think so too, and I think we've got to have a frank discussion about how they're going to cut costs in order to be able to pay for things because this shouldn't be like an emergency in the red unless we've planned it and we're not replenishing the resources that we have, and that's what concerns me. And I realize- And the refresh, we definitely have to talk about that, if that could possibly be put off another well, year. Well, I don't, I don't think so, because the conversation I had with Art, and Ben certainly can answer that better, is that, especially with the hard, hard use of the machines right now, they're gonna start seeing a need to do replacement because of the, the level of use these machines are getting. Ben? Then expect a big expense. We deferred an extra year um, already. I mean, we can certainly look at anything. I can provide that update to the board of what the scenarios would be, but uh, these current Chromebooks, we pushed out uh, an additional year. Uh, so we're looking at four years and may have held up exceptionally well, but on a fifth year uh, on these devices may be a bit of a challenge, but I'll do some work and I'll, I'll bring back some, some thoughts and ideas on that. That would be great. That's good. That would be so great. I mean, the kids have to be able to, you know, depend on these things and, and failures, you know, we don't know how long we're going to stay in remote. It may be this entire year. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. It's just, as, as you said, we cannot keep just putting the expenses on and on and on because <laughs> without replenishing our, 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 yeah. you know, resources, we have but, to have a plan. So that's, that's, that's why I kind of mentioned these things. There's something coming up and I know it's a late night, but I want to make sure, Kind of, if, if people got more questions, reach out to me, and I'll do my best to answer them. If not, I'll, you know, inform them to inform the Ron for, you know, further clarification. But I just want to let people know that there's some additional expenses that we may be incurring. I'd like to ask. I'm sorry, I thought you were done. I, no, go I, ahead. I was going to ask you, if you do get questions from people, um, would you please forward them to Art to then send to the whole board? because I'm sure there are things that I haven't even thought of that I'd like to know the answer to. Okay. Thanks, that would be good. Thank you so much for your work on this. This is such a key area that really needs attention and we've got to solve this and we haven't gotten there yet. And I'm gonna go with Al and we're gonna visit a couple of schools and look this over again because 
I have some questions about the entrances. Okay, good. So we'll look forward to hearing from you about what you find out. Um, and uh, we have to have a serious discussion. I think the problem is that we're going to be looking at cuts for staff. I don't see how they're going to find a way to save money without doing that. And that's what I worry about. But we have to make the tough decision or we're just going to be like this for mm -hmm. however long. I mean, we're looking at another, you know, 30 million and within 10 years. We have to have a way to save that money. I, I, I think I think this last swing took a chunk out of that 30 million that in the next 10 years. It did. I think it did. Yeah. I think we need to see that data then, Randy. Could you uh, provide? I, that? I mean, I, I, I just look. I just look at what I just looked at what got added. What they've added to the what they've added yeah. to the plan. Yeah. You know, they've added. They added about a good four or five million dollars worth of work. And don't forget those. That 30 million dollars was based on, you know, acorn or. Um, our, our our architects Archon, cost, yeah. our, our, our cost estimates not what cts is doing so you know based on you know we probably got a, a nice swing out of it i won't say we got a lot of it but we we got we we took a good bite of it how does that sound well i think we need a report and i guess i could ask art to report it well that's and that's well that's next thing if, if you guys indulge me for a few more minutes sure, uh, one, go ahead. One, one thing um they have done is they have Started, they've, uh, uh, they've kind of asked for more clarification on the, on, the, on the facility plan and stuff like that. So that one thing we, one thing we, they were, they were kind of looking at is almost like recreating the health life safety, which every little repair and ability needs. And we, and I think, you know, both Robert Mardell and I <coughs> said, we want to see, you know, what are the big 10 things within a building needs to be done? We know about HVACs, we know about roofing, we know about flooring, we know about windows, those type of things, tuck pointing. Those are the types we want to see, things we want to see in the facilities plan. Things that we would, I knew, like Robert and I were talking about, things that would have to go out for bid instead of like stuff that we can do in house. Right. So that's what they're, they're going to more country on that and hopefully have something for us in the next couple of months. And that's going to look out how far, because I'm worried about that 10 year drop with 30, 30 million that was estimated. Well, we've got yeah. three debts out now. So it's just not, I mean, we've got the original from the, uh, preschool building in this building and now the facilities. So that's three of them, three big debts. Right. But that's not what I'm asking for. What I'm asking for is how much more needs to get done that has to be sent out to bid or done by a group right. like CTS. And we had looked at $30 million worth of maintenance and, and repairs and capital expenditures in the next 10 years, you know, we're coming and it's 30 million. So I want to know now what the update is based on what Randy just reported. Yeah. So, so that, so that, that art, that Albert and um, Ron are putting together. Um, we didn't set up a, a official time frame when we expect that. But we can, at our next meeting, we can say, Hey, when do we expect this kind of thing or some, some initial preliminary information related to it? Or doesn't don't they have enough time between now and the 14th to actually give us? I know it's a committee of the whole meeting, so maybe. Yeah, I think I think we want to give them a little more time than that because they were they we were just giving we were just giving them the kind of like the specifications of what we were looking for okay. yesterday. Okay. We can't expect it. We 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 that'd be un, it'd be unreasonable to try and expect that out of them. You know, in the next two weeks. They well, work together very well. Right. I thought they were miracle workers, but if you say we have to wait, we can wait. No, well, you know, we got to give them, we got to cut them a little slack. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they've worked so hard already. Really pleased with the way they've worked out. So, so sorry, sorry, sorry for this. Sorry for letting me go longer. Well, you have a nerve, but it was important. I'm glad you told us because it's really important to have heard it. So, all right, anything else before we adjourn? Not that I can think of. Okay, now again, we have to take roll call because this is an electronic meeting. So do we have a motion to adjourn? You I'll, make the motion, I'll make the motion that we adjourn. I thought you all wanted to stay. Nobody stepped up. <laughs> Who wants to second it? Yeah, Mardell. Okay, Mardell seconds it. Roll call, please. Okay, let's see where am I? Uh, Robert, did I do this already, Robert? Aye. 
Me, I, Randy. Aye. Mardell. Aye. Janice. Aye. Chris. Aye. And Courtney. Aye. And the motion passes.